Well, hey, welcome to the show before the show where I check to make sure everything is working. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, the local game guy, and it's a little brisk in here. So let's start by fixing that. This room, I feel like everyone has that one room in their house or their apartments. Let's be real. That's just sporadic so far as what temperature it wants to be. And my studio is that space, sadly. In our living arrangement. But how are all of you? Let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd, I, that's why these are live. I want to know how you guys are. It seems like there's some excitement about Anixia. A lot of Abzonians in the audience, I suppose. Now, we have a poll ongoing currently, if you'd like to participate. Uh, it's whether or not you enjoy playing Abzan and Commander. And I'm also curious, uh, it's the name, or rather the title of this video, is Anixia going to perform well as a commander? I have no idea. So normally I have a really, really big think on these legends before we get to them, but Anixia is one I just haven't had any direct play lines come to mind for. So I'm hoping that through the, uh, the journey we have today, we'll discover all of the appropriate play lines for Anixia and make her work gloriously. At least, again, that's my hope. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, other enchantment creatures you control have menace. I don't think we're gonna go enchantment creature tribal, but we can. Ugh, it'd be cool if the no. Okay, so we do make enchantment creatures just by way of her effect. So there's that, and I suppose we can run Eidolon of Rhetoric and any other sort of you know stacks or value enchantment creatures. Calyx, <laughs> Calyx even. If you watched our live tier list uh, for March of the Machine and the aftermath. You know, I, at least, was a fan of Calyx. I think that he could be made well. I don't know how well, but it's like a deck I would love to try out. Any sort of mass board wipe probably just uh, hurts. But I think you can recover fairly well, provided you get to your, you know, Enchantress cards in that list. It's funny, I was just recently playing with Alex... Uh, and a couple of other people, and to include Ernesto, um, for uh, I, I'm practicing for a tournament that's coming up on June 18th. So I was practicing with them, and I played Blue Farm. And I want to say every single time I had a tutor, every single time I had a tutor, I tutored for Mystic Remora. Every single time. And it always worked. <laughs> no one had a, any sort of counter for it. Fortunately, no mental misstep uh, came my way for that. One game I watched a mental misstep hit something else in that one slot. Oh, felt so good when I was, you know, third in turn order and I got to just play Mystic Remora out. And luckily, a lot of the lists that were at the table were very greedy. So everyone sort of just followed suit. Uh, I did okay. I get a little impatient with that deck because you just want to do the thing and I feel like I'm able to do the thing in blue farm fairly easily, but I don't have like the equations worked out in my head so far as how much mana requisite do I need to get the ball rolling on the strategy uh, once I die for the underworld breach, so on and so forth. But uh, that's not going to be as exciting as Anixia though. I mean, we've all seen brain freeze lines, brain freeze. We've all seen intuition lines that include brain freeze. Um, we've all seen Blue Farm maybe played out. So yeah, let's not let's not even talk about that. But yeah, I've I've been practicing that for an upcoming tournament. I'm excited to play it. I think I did. I won. I won a couple times. I I not that I was keeping count, but. It's, uh, it's fine. It was very, like, one game I started with a Thalsis Oracle and a Dem not Demotic Consultation Tainted Pack, which we're actually set up for, land-wise here. And it was, it worked. I'm like, I just, I'm just going to ship this and I have a Counterspell in hand, so I do or don't. It was a turn three win, too. I played very slow. I just played one of my, like, a lot of fast mana, played Krom, waited, found a Counterspell, Thalsis Oracle... Luckily, no one had anything, so I was like, okay, well, I win. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll have the same luck when this tournament rolls around. Uh, Madra says, I have only Miracle as an Abzan leader. Lead singer. Oh, Miracle. I don't know if I know Miracle. Hey, yeah. Hey, Madra. Uh, Miracle Lord of Bones, you say? 
you guys can't see it, but I can. I'll read it off for you. Four generic Abzen, seven five, oh, seven five. Back to the good old days. Three hits, you're out. Legendary creature god, as long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total. Okay, uh huh. Has indestructible. Um, okay. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's an enchantment, so it's kind of like a reverse. Anicthia? Kind of? Kind of. That's neat. I don't know what it does. Like, what, what's your strategy for it, rather? But I can clearly read what it does. But I'd be interested to see what this list, uh, your list does. I love Abzan. I have Nasroi and Ik to kick Timna goblins. Is Ik to is Ik to kick? Ik to kick. It's one of the partners, obviously, but I I forget which one he is. Ik to kick salvage splicer. Enters, create a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token. Whenever an artifact you put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter. Oh, that's pretty dope. On each golem you control. So golem tribal. So this will be a replenish deck. Is that so? Is that what it's going to be? Because your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> uh, so if you guys don't know replenish, it's kind of cool. Like we could literally... So if you're if you're over on tapped out and you followed the deck list, it I copy and pasted a land base from a previous Abzan list I made years ago. So I've updated it to have all of the horizon lands. I like calling them commander lands. Has all the commander lands in it. I think I took out the pain lands for it. And there aren't any basics. It's all rainbow and or fetch and or dual and or horizon slash. That's it. I think that's it. Go ahead and look. Ancient Tomb and City of Traders are in there too, but she has two generic in her cost. Okay. So I put all those in there, and technically we could run Hermit Druid. That that is a thing we can do. So if you guys don't if you guys don't know who Hermit Druid is, we can we can look at it. This is very slow and you're very much broadcasting precisely what you want to do, but I mean you could actually do a replenish into a Hermit Druid, right? Uh, so it's a generic and a green, pay a green, tap, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Well, we don't have any of those, if I'm not mistaken. I'll look at that later. I don't think I added any. Uh, put that card into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Sure. So if you did play Replenish, you know, and I, I don't know if uh, Dafsa was being serious or not. I mean, it, that's essentially what Anicthia is doing, but return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to play. Totally a play line there. That is totally something you can do and that's totally a hundred dollars right now my goodness okay enchantress with many creatures and some combo cards gotcha gotcha i have to admit i got all the enchantress staples and was quite disappointed by her anixia you were disappointed by anixia are are we i guess is everyone thinking that this would be like a good enchantress commander we can talk about her in a second um Okay, that's um, that's upsetting. I mean, she is kind of costly, so I feel like Sithis is still sort of the queen so far as Enchantress lists are concerned. Only makes sense. She is an Enchantress herself, and at two converted mana costs, like you're going to get her on the field very, very quickly. Um, at any rate, why don't we why don't we officially start this? I think it's yeah, it's five oh one. Hey, welcome to. Uh, the podcast, the podcast, the live stream today. We're going to be brewing Anicthia Hand of Erebos. Uh, Erebos, a god I've never played with, but uh, Anicthia, one we'll, we'll work on today. I'm Patrick Marlette, your local game guy, and uh, we do these weekly. So if this is your first time jumping in on a live stream, that's not the podcast. Our last tier list podcast did very well. And like it's life after the pod has been very interesting. I get a lot of questions regarding the thumbnail I put up in the community post. And the easiest way to find out where those legends have went, if you're one of those people asking, is to just go to that previous live stream. Myself, Will, and Ernesto were on that. It was a very fun time. It was four hours of us chatting over legends. So there's a lot to comb over. I could not add timestamps for everything. So you're just going to have to scrub through it, but it was a very good time. But yeah, if this is your first time visiting the channel, we do live stream gameplay for One Piece TCG. We've actually got a game set up for tomorrow. It should be at 5 p.m. That might get pushed back. We'll see. Depends on my guest. 
And uh, we do these every Wednesday, and I try to start roughly around 5 p.m. every single time. And today we're going to be working on a Commander Masters card from um, this upcoming set. I think it's like later this year. We've been had a few things spoiled from it, but Anictia Hand of Erebos is probably one of the more interesting ones. I think we all collectively looked at all of the non-aura enchantments to see what was out there, and side that there wasn't that all that much but we'll look at them again today and see if we can't get the ball rolling on an interesting anicthia strategy but yeah we do these every wednesday 5 p.m so feel free to tune in also like share i don't say that normally but it does actually help and i'm seeing it with a lot more of these videos you guys are sharing like youtube's doing this thing called a weekly recap in case you want to know and they've mentioned like the they mentioned the amount of likes and shares obviously it's an analytic they take into consideration when they're pushing content but uh it's happening more you guys are liking and sharing more so i appreciate that thank you please please persist persist combo persist combo the like and shares um but wish she'd been esper so she could play with the newer zur the newer zur uh do you do do we mean our our boy oscar <laughs> And Ichthy is uh, cool. I think she'll be a good Abzan Enchantress deck. Just mine, uh, minor aggro, minor aggro, I assume. That's all. Uh, July for Commander Masters, no. Is it really July? Is it really that soon? I have to buy boxes of... I have to buy boxes of One Piece TCG next month. How, however will I buy Commander Masters? Hopefully we'll get sent some. Who knows? Buy some, some, some good... Some good act of God, um, or demigod in Anicthia's case. So let's let's talk on her. About time. Anicthia, Hand of Erebos, for two generic and Abzan, 4-4, four, four, legendary enchantment creature, demigod, menace. Other enchantment creatures you control have menace. Ojoy, oh what does that mean for you? Not altogether too much, unless you care to build around that, outside of the fact that whenever Anicthia enters the battlefield or attacks, and just attacks. Mind you, she has Menace, so you're probably going to get around whatever's out there, but, well, doubly so now. Exile up to one target non-aura enchantment card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 3-3 black zombie creature in addition to its other types. So, I know a large part of the discussion around Anicthia was the fact that did we really need something that cheated out enchantments from the graveyard and then made them ultimately more squishy and the answer is no but i mean they're innovating in the space and this is something they haven't necessarily done right in the same fashion so i don't mind it's 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 definitely odd she's a high cost and it does require setup but it is repeatable value turn after turn she isn't a five drop do nothing if you know you've unmarked graved or you've entombed the thing you wanted going into this and it can actually be a creature enchantment going into your graveyard as well so there is that All right so we can do a buried alive pile and just reanimate one of our enchantment creatures to get it back um bearing in mind it's not a reanimate necessarily you are exiling the thing and making a copy of it so the thing will be exiled. Does that mean we utilize Rift Sweeper or what's that other one? There's one in white. Probably not, is what I'm getting at. Although the one in white puts it from exile into the graveyard, I think. Rift Sweeper's to hand. I could be mistaken. Uh, that would be a cool recovery spell, actually. So maybe there's that for us. Uh, by and large, though, I see Anicthia is potentially an Enchantress deck. It is going to obviously value enchantments but i don't know if we really run that many and this is where we're going to talk through this that's that's the beauty of these live stream deck techs is that we get to build the deck together i'm not certain that's the best approach because again there are better enchantress commanders as we've stated off the bat so what does anicthia bring to the table that's unique and i don't think it's draw provided your 99 has enough enchantments i think it's the fact that she just brings stuff back from your graveyard so we want to look for the biggest baddest enchantments to bring back that are not auras and see how we can manip manipulate those for a win somehow or hopefully they'll just be uh big enough hate pieces that we can kill the board with a, a massive zombies and or some sort of voltron -y build again i really i really don't know where to take her so this is gonna be an interesting stream today and again going to rely heavily on our collaborative effort to get the ball rolling on this demigod. However, I am excited for it because I like unique takes 
on legendary enchantment creatures. So, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. she is, and Watsi's devs know what they're doing. She would be busted if there was blue in her identity. Nah, Zer Eternal Schemer. Oh, there's an actual new Zer. Cool. It does still share two colors though, so there might be similar deck, uh, similar tech rather that could be lifted. Okay. They did the mono black harpy in Theros Beyond Death that had similar style. Okay. Cool. So we play Ephemerate, Necropotence, and combo with that somehow. Okay, let's look at that. So I think that, without a doubt, without a doubt, Necropotence is like something that I want to put in. Obviously, you can re it's it's like a it's like a less effective Zer. It's like a workaround Zer, right? Because you can entomb the Necropotence and then you can exile it uh, and then bring it back what's nice though is that once you've put those triggers on the stack to get the cards in your hand at end of turn i mean you could technically kill that necropotence zombie so you don't have to worry about exiling the things from your graveyard so you'll still have access to them on uh, end step right although i will state uh, as you were mentioning with the ephemerate it may make more sense to Necropotence to hand size, and then of course, uh, end step, you discard down, which causes a trigger to occur, uh, allowing you to regain priority as well as your opponents. And then you can ephemerate to, right, once you go back down to seven, you can ephemerate to hit one of the things in your graveyard that potentially works as a combo, but Necropotence itself is like not a combo, right? So is this some sort of weird, not going to do like a shimmer murder thing. Oh, this is so weird. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see uh I'm excited to see how this functions. Let's see here. So, ba -ba -ba -ba, some sort of aristocrat with o-ring effects on Anicthia could be cool, but I don't know if there's enough density for that. Like o-ring, you make o-ring creatures. How about make her play with Saga? Huh. Well, that's that's sort of what I want to start with, right? So we're really just going to look up enchantment. And uh, I guess... Is there a way to say, like, non-aura? We're just going to have to go through and, you know, pick out the aura-based enchantments. But I think the easiest way to do this is really just start from the top down, and not by power. Not by power. Like that. Okay. Are there any Buried Alive type cards for enchantments? Uh, to my knowledge, no, not that I can think of, you know, I, I, to be frank, I've never really looked, so there might be, like, search library for X enchantments, that'd be amazing, but Buried Alive will still work on our, our enchantment creatures, right, like, we can bring Athreos, God of Passage, back, right, technically, we can bring any, any enchantment, non-aura enchantment back, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, which, begs the question are there any worth bringing back is there an exponential curve line of play that could be done with anointed procession and uh, populate effects so there is a I feel like it's up here there is an interesting i think it's populate Ooh, what is going on oh it's still in power i switched to mana value come on come on there's this new white... Oh, my lord. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Please. Please show me the cards I want to see. Uh, touch the Eternal. No, that's not it. We're, we're looking at... It's a white card. I think most people were talking about it. I don't think it's Anointed Procession. It's Song of the World Soul. So this is what a lot of people have mentioned is kind of interesting. Whenever you cast a spell, Populate, right? So you were mentioning Populate. This is sort of the Populate combo card for this deck. Create a token that is a copy of a creature token you control. So we're making creature tokens. So the idea is this can get out of hand. I think what we're trying to aim for is potentially a way to infinitely make ideally hasty zombies, right? That can swing and or just have a sack outlet that we can leverage. But whenever you cast a spell, populate. I don't think she says exile and cast, right? That'd be kind of cool if she did. Um, create a token that's a copy. Nope. That would have been really good. 
sadly not the case. All right, I have some ASMR can opening for you. If you enjoy. <laughs> yeah, priority anyways after the necro cards get in your hand, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that can be done. The harpy, the harpy was Ephemia cacophony. Okay, I'll have to look it up. That's the other kind of similar to a Nyctia one. Agent of Erebos. I must go have a nice stream. Majra, take care. Thank you for joining <laughs> for as long as you could. Type uh, negative aura. Oh, okay, very cool. I think I need to do this, 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 I think that'll do. There we go. Well, it didn't really knock that many out, but that's okay. Uh, that's if you want to go for a more toolbox strat. I could see us just having it as a utility in the 99, but I get what you're saying. We necro for like 39, then discard Abdel and Necromancy. Then on the exile trigger, we ephemerate and bring back necromancy. Uh, we might need to run some redundancy for an ephemerate, but yeah, provided you have ephemerate, do that or any sort of flicker effect. It becomes an aura once it ETBs, brings back up down. Kalua, and can you actually? So I know we were talking about it on the Discord. There were some people discussing this with the effects. She says non aura necromancy. If you guys don't know, it becomes an it becomes an aura when it does the thing it's an enchantment base what is the rule there is this actually a, a thing you can do with this effect i assume so but i i've heard of people discussing the necromancy like there there should be a necromancy line of play and uh, we can look at abdel really quick uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Abdel, Gorian's Ward. Four generic and a white, legendary creature, human warrior. When Abdel, Gorian's Ward, enters the battlefield, exile any number of non-land permanents you control until Abdel leaves the battlefield. Create a 1-1... One, one... Huh. Huh. So you're suggesting that Abdel comes in off of the necromancy. The necromancy ends... Anicthia and anything else gets targeted by Abdel. They bounce. Abdel goes back to the graveyard. We make an army. We'll technically make an army of 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. But moreover, we're bringing stuff back with Anicthia. Is that the playline I'm hearing? And maybe one of those things is a concordant crossroad, right? Or any sort of enchantment. Everything has haste, right? Is that the idea? Then you have infinite commander triggers, right? When it dies, it lets you tutor a card from your graveyard. It's five mana. This is the, this is the other card. Gotcha. Uh, never mind. That doesn't work. The commander makes a token, not the actual thing. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we tried. Thank you. A combo with her is using out of time. If you remove her from the field while you reanimate out of time. Oh, I like this card. Okay. For one generic and double white, when out of time enters the battlefield, untap all creatures, then phase them out until out of time leaves the battlefield. Put a time counter on out of time for each creature phased out this way. And as vanishing at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from this enchantment. When the last one is removed, sacrifice it. Cool. So you're suggesting, Lorenzo, a combo with her is using out of time. If you move her from the field while you reanimate out of time, as a creature, you can phase out forever. Every creature in play forever. Pretty neat to me. Huh. James says Meat Hook Massacre. Or just Meat Hook, but we, we know what you mean. So this one's pretty interesting. Whenever Meat Hook Massacre enters the battlefield, each creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn. So they would get negative zero, negative zero. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses X, uh, one life, rather. When a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain one life. Whenever a creature you control dies. 
So is this part of the aristocrat line of play? Is that the suggestion here? It seems to work with necromancy. We could also try O-ring loops. Um, Dasva, the only, the only issue is that the necromancy we bring back is just a copy. So the token would, the token would go, sadly. Uh, you know what? I realized that. My... Sorry about that. I realized that my circular camera is pretty, pretty small. You want to see more of my face, right? Uh, yes, yeah, let's just up that just a little bit. That was going to bother me. Yeah. Sure. That's good. I like it top right. I realize that uh, I think it's been top left or bottom left for all these videos. Let's, let's make it top right. Okay. Oh, that's genius. That's your end to Abdel loop. So what, what, I, okay. Here's my issue with the Abdel loop, right? The way it was described in Kahlua, as Kahlua mentions, like it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily infinite. What are we on? Sorry. Sorry for a loop there. The non-necromancy randomate enchantments uh, don't work. Correct. Right, but so just so you guys know, necromancy, I'll just look it up for you all so we can look at it together. Necromancy is an enchantment, and then you may cast it as a flash, blah, 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 enters the battlefield. It's, uh, I'm going to just read this here instead. When necromancy enters the battlefield, it's on the battle. If it's on the battlefield, it becomes an aura with enchant creature put onto the battlefield with necromancy. Put target card, creature card rather, from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control and attach necromancy to it. When necromancy leaves the battlefield, that creature's controller sacrifices it. So you'd be sacrificing a token and the actual necromancy would be in exile. Um, and I don't think Abdel will bring this token that is just, just goes away as a state-based action uh, back. But I like, I like the thought. <laughs> I definitely like the thought of it. Is Anikthia, I mean, is there something else to do with just Abdel... It's so much work. Like we we need to the the actual the fact that it exiles the thing again. It's not like a true reanimate. You're you're exiling the thing and copying it. You kind of need one of these like return from exile effects to get the card back. But then we just went through the trouble of entombing it. Out of time phases itself out um, as a three three zombie, so it can't tick down the vanishing right. Or does vanishing still tick down at upkeep anyways, even if it phased out? Um, I like the idea of this as tech in the deck. I think if it vanishes itself, then it's, it's, if it, okay. Because when it enters the battlefield, all creatures, um, untap all creatures, then phase them out until out of time leaves the battlefield. All right. So if I'm not mistaken, this will work similarly to like how phrases that have multiple sentences in them do. Like when you reanimate Villis. Like when you reanimate Villis, you do the first part, right? Put target card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Done. Villis is there. Then you lose life equal to its mana value. Done. I lose life. Villis makes me draw cards. I think in the same sense, you would bring this in as a 3-3 creature. You would untap it and all other creatures that's already untapped. Then phase them out so they would go away. You still continue reading the text. Put a time counter on out of time for each creature phased out this way. Well, it's no longer there. So everything just remains phased out to my understanding. And someone who is more knowledgeable to this game's rules can correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's how that would work. What about dead bridge chant? Can necromancy become an aura actually, if it is a creature? I don't see why not. <laughs> it's a solid question, though. Deadbridge Chant enters the battlefield. Put the top 10 cards of your library into your graveyard. All right, that's already useful so far as the strategy is concerned. And part of me thinks that we should rely on some self-mill, right? We can we could just have Mesmeric Orb in the deck, and I think that would be okay. Um, obviously, it fuels breach lines, which is horrible. But stuff like this would be good, like putting your individual 
do you select no it's it's you okay at the beginning of your upkeep choose a card at random in your graveyard if it's a creature card put it onto the battlefield okay otherwise put it into your hand hmm my qualm is that it's it's just very it's slow because i wish it was at your end step to be frank you just spent six well i mean look if you're just looking at this card by itself you just spent technically six mana to do the thing and all you're really doing is milling yourself 10 cards and not getting anything that same turn. That's rough. Sounds right. It should be phased out with zero counters on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The seals are great. Um, <laughs> right. So if you guys don't know, like seal of cleansing, we can put those in seal of cleansing. And what's the other one? Seal of, I'll look it up. Seal of Cleansing is great. Seal of Primordium. I like these. So let's just put our value pieces in right now and then we can sort of move from there. I don't know if we use Seal of Doom. Destroy target non-black creature. You know, why not? It'll, it'll hit stuff. Um, but that's it for us in Abzan. So we can we can move back here. So what I just want to do is take a quick glance at all the high end enchantments, see if there's anything we're missing. Because to be frank, like none of there's none of the combos really work in a great or meaningful way to the deck, right? There's just things that value things that work in tandem here, but nothing else that really allows us to pilot to a win. Like the Abdel line doesn't work because the Necromancy is a copy, sadly. Okay, so at the beginning of your end steps, I like this already, the sound of it. You may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, each opponent loses life equal to the card's converted mana cost. Well, that's that just seems like not enough for seven. Debtor's Nell, at the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So this kind of works well with that self-mill strategy, or the mass mill strategy, right? Kind of a cool way to bring stuff back. I hate that, again, it's at the beginning of your upkeep, but that's okay. I don't think the idea behind Dead Bridge Chant is to ever cast it, but use it as a self-mill. Right, I'm just saying that by itself, like obviously, well, what's the difference, right? You're spending either six for that or five for your commander to just bring that back. And again, it's just self-mill 10, stop, and then wait a turn, right? So if it's still around by your next upkeep, sure, then you get to do the thing. I, that's the reason I don't like it. I would rather it say at end of turn because then it would make more sense that, that is a six CMC card. Just by I'm just looking at it as face value. Obviously, we're trying to cheat it out, but again, Nyctia is only one less than the card itself, so I don't know if it does enough for us. Again, for me, I would rather run something like this. Again, despite the fact that it helps breach piles. Like if you don't run against a lot of underworld breach, then then go for it for sure. Because this is a value-centric list, if we were to run Mesmeric Orb to just like mill our own graveyard, we would definitely want to make sure that we are getting the most out of our graveyard turn after turn and have a lot of stacks or a definite endgame in plan. Uh, otherwise, no. Vessel of uh, Nascency, Nascency uh, which is essentially mill four, then be brought back by Nyctia. Vessel of Nascency. I think I know which one you're talking about. Let's just put it in the list for now. You know what's weird? I, I hate to say it. Actually, I don't hate to say it. I think there's some truth in wanting to run our Enchantress cards in here because elsewise, we are we don't really have that kind of value in the command zone. So we need to get draw somehow. And if we're going to try to rely on art of um, enchantments rather, then we need, to, we need to benefit. Is Legion's loyalty good in the deck? I don't know yet. I'm going to get to the bottom of this page and then I'll answer that for you. Nyx Bloom Ancient has combos. If you untap a permanent for mana, it's, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. That'd be kind of cute to have uh, reanimated as a 3-3 zombie. Whenever a creature you, control, you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control in addition with plus one plus one counter on at the beginning of your next end step. Of the next end step. That's kind of dope. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other types. Are we are we going to do a goblin tribal thing? I'm going to put grave betrayal in here just for now. Just just wait, just wait. Maybe maybe it's good. Um because if we do uh we're going to put culling ritual in here. 
Like, if we culling ritual some stuff and just kill that dock side and get to bring it back, whenever your creature control dies, return to the battlefield, you get it immediately at the beginning of the next end step. Ugh, that, 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 that hurts. That smarts. But I still like it. I'll put it, I'll put it on the sideboard for now, actually. I don't know if it's that good. I don't think it's that good. Right there. That's a, that's a worthy spot for it. Okay. Hedonist Trove. Enters the battlefield, exile all the cards from target opponent's graveyard. Sure, you play land cards exiled with hedonist trove okay okay all right i feel like i'm a little off center here i should move that camera you may cast non-land cards exiled with hedonist trove you can't cast more than one spell okay that's actually kind of cool though but it doesn't do enough like that's that's not comparable to a mnemonic betrayal or anything that's operating in that same in that same way you can get four triggers for one attack legion's loyalty i'll look it up really quick Teleportation circle might be good. Um, that's not that's not what you suggested. Legion loyalty. Okay, six generic double white creatures you control have myriad. So the issue is Anicthia, when you do this, any legendary creature is gonna recognize itself and then as a state-based action, because you can't have two of the same named legendary on the field, uh the, the ones you make are gonna die. So Whenever a creature you control attacks, I guess you get the triggers, right? Whenever a creature you control attacks, and then you'd, you'd get to it. Well, they'd both, so you'd have to stack it. You'd have to stack the Myriad trigger, right? And then you have a Nycthea's trigger. No, but you don't declare that creature as attacking. You don't, for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of that creature that's tapped and attacking. I think this subverts the rule you're trying to you're trying to work with here. I think the fact of the matter is you never declared it as an attacker, so it wasn't around for you to say, yeah, whenever this attacked, I get to recover an enchantment. I do think the three triggers is kind of nice, but I don't think that it's necessary. I think we should just be aiming for one to two things every turn that really are game changing, and that would be good. Sagas seem straightforward, but there are no good sagas, right? Well, I mean, I don't know if that's true. There might be some good sagas. Let's put Nyx Bloom Ancient in for now. Because again, this this is technically like a combo card. Also, it just will help us to ramp. Like if we get these bi like big dumb enchantments stuck in our hand, at least we know we can pull them out if we just entomb and reanimate that guy. Copy, cast that guy. She has an ETB, no, and she can exile itself. She can exile itself. Uh, she can ETB. I'm assuming. I mean, myriad. Yeah, but myriad's on the attack. I don't know. I'm I'm iffy on it. Uh, hey, hey Luke, thanks for tuning in. Uh, whenever Nylia is Colossus, we're building a Nycthia. <laughs> Trying to. It's it's weird because if there's no clear like play lines for reanimating enchantments that are meaningful. And again, it's not reanimate. There's no clear lines of wit play for exiling and copying enchantments. Whenever Nylee is Colossus or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, double target creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Now, that actually sounds dumb enough to do something with. Nylee is an enchantment, you say? Okay. Um, so what I want to do... I'm thinking like some sort of buried alive pile that allows us to... to make an army of things. Right, it can't obviously have necrotic ooze unless he's an enchantment, and I didn't know. The spell costs one less to cast for each enchantment you control. Yes, sky blessed samurai. Ooh, ooh, this is a nod, by the way. This is a nod to the uh, I haven't seen this card, I don't think, or at least I don't remember this card. Oh, what the moth rider samurai? <laughs> Can you see it? Do you see it? I mean, okay, again, this is less relevant that, that this is a thing, but that's so funny. I love that they did that. All right, so the way Myriad works, you attack all copies ETB, you put the original in the grave, then exile her, and she will come back as a zombie. As a zombie. So you're saying that you want to use a Nycthea's ability to recover herself? Whenever Nyctia enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non. So she's not there for the trigger, though. She's not in the grave for this 
target non or enchantment card from your graveyard. Again, I, I I could use some clarity. Like if I'm wrong, let me know. I I don't I don't see giving her myriad and bringing. I don't know. Like I I would rather just have an effect that says, did you just trigger something? Do it again and then bring two things back, and that would be enough for me. I think any sort of myriad line of play is maybe a little convoluted, but if it works, sure. I just don't. Don't you have to pick a target for the? Okay, so. I don't think that hard. Like This is our first saga. I just want to see if there's any good sagas. Let's start there. The world spell per five generic and double green. Read ahead. Choose a chapter and start with that many lore counters. Add one after you draw your draw step. Skipped chapters don't trigger. Oh, that sucks. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a non-saga permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Put up to two non-saga permanent. Oh, that's kind of cool that read ahead bit of text i've never seen that at the beginning of your upkeep can uh, count the number of permanents you control your life total becomes that number um all the blade wing the risen work like that uh you state you state based put it into the grave uh, i love the world spell but the set looks uh ai generated i can see what you mean i can definitely see what you mean Whatever land is tapped for mana, add one mana of any uh, color that type of land can produce. Whenever you cast a creature spell, okay, that's no good. We're just going to go through a handful of the higher costed ones. Uh, we could win with Baron Glory. Uh, probably not. Probably not, really. Collective Blessing. Creatures you control get plus three, plus three at the beginning of your upkeep. You'd really think there'd be like a bomb enchantment, don't you? Am I missing the bomb enchantments, like the things that should do a lot as soon as they hit the field and like immediately alter the shape of the game? Because I'm not seeing any of them here. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draw discards a card. Ooh, ooh, that's interesting. Whenever a creature you control dies, put an X plus in the no. Feed the pack at the beginning of your end step. You may sacrifice. Nope. Goliath Hatchery enters the battlefield. Create two three three Phyrexian beast creature tokens with toxic one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent has three or more poison, state-based action resolves, then targets are declared, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she would be there. She would be there. Because technically, you, you would... Ugh. So you technically have... All right, let's just really think about it here. So you have the... ETB, you bring the thing back. You'd still need to attack to get the attacking trigger. Am I am I right? And you attack. Okay, so you do the thing now. You create. Uh, you need to let that trigger resolve, right? So you have two triggers on the stack. The first one resolves, creating three of them. You let the first one go. But I still don't think you get the attack trigger off of them. You just get the ETB and you bring three things back plus her. So two things back. No, because her trigger still resolves. You get four things back, like you were saying, four things. I uh, Okay. Yeah. Where Where is it? <laughs> Let's try it. I mean, that might... It's is it? It's this one. Legion. Legion loyalty. Nope, not that one. Really had to put my head in the tank there. It's still not that one. <laughs> All right. So what is the what is the three four what is the four card dream combo that we just hermit druided? What are we trying to do here? Let me know what four enchantments you can bring back that win the game. If you can't win with four enchantments, then man, rough times. But what is what are we dumping our library and trying to hit in our graveyard? If a saga comes back as a creature, they still get the chapter counters. Furge's retribution to give to give bodies. Wow, that's that's an interesting playline. Um, maybe hollowed haunting. Hollowed haunting. Um, I need to look that one up. I forget what it does. Whenever Marduk Bond or another permanent you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a permanent that shares a card type with it. That's cool. An eye for an eye sort of deal. <laughs> Not good enough, though. When Necromancer's Coven enters the battlefield, exile all creature cards from Tiger Player's Library. Okay. More zombies. Oh my gosh, and the zombies we have have lifelink. 
Yeah, it's slow to get going, to be honest, since you need the Myriad. You get four things back, plus one, more if you choose herself uh, with one copy. Right. Well, I mean, you, you. I guess at best, though... I mean, would you just put her back in the command zone and just take the three triggers you're getting off the ETBs? Right? I mean, I, I'm trying to go for a win. If, like, I go through all that trouble, I'm really going to try to go for a win. You should. I think you should. Whenever you gain life, you may put that many plus one plus one counters on a thing. And also, it's like you're very much, you've got it, man, that you're broadcasting that combo from like miles away. Like you, you bring the thing back. It's just sitting there, this Legion's Loyalist thing. Your opponents are confused, but they're like, what are you trying to, what? Your my myriad? What are you doing? And then you, you dump your library, aha, with the Hermit Druid that's been there summoning sick. Or you do some Mesmeric or Basalt Monolith line, and then you dump your library, and you're like, okay, yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to attack or enter combat. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? And then you attack. All right, you attack, and you do the, ah, oh, blah, here's three, here's three things, and then, oh, no, she dies, and they're all, they're all gone. I, I it's very slow and very predictable and I feel like you're just everyone's gonna eat your lunch but what are the just tell me the things you want to bring back and maybe we'll do it just came in out of time is fun with her um uh, Matthew Matthew thank you I we we actually put out of time in and I believe you it does look fun with her uh ritual of subdual also sounds fun all mana producing lands produce colorless mana instead of their normal mana Ignore me. That's not true. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have a base power and toughness of four four. It'd be cool if we there is a thing. Okay, so Song of the World Soul is a grindy thing we want to do. Okay, so okay to be perfectly honest, yes, this is going to be an enchantress list. It's going to be a stacks list. We're going to add all of the value stacks pieces in a second. I think we uh, carpet of flowers. We're going to add a wild growth. We're going to add fast mana because this is going to be really slow. We're not going to add any dorks wild growth. We're going to use Utopia Sprawl. Uh, Sylvan Library. Sure, we'll bring that back. Uh, but there are better things to do. We already put Necropotence in here. I think SBA are before the triggering entering the stack. So you will get the attack trigger from the original. Then you need to choose one of the tokens and then the ETB enters the stack. This has got to be a Lich's Mastery deck. I think I just passed Lich's Mastery. Let me read this other, this is our second saga we're getting to review here. Three generic and triple black, the war in heaven. You draw three cards and lose three life. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, mill three cards. Oh, it plays into our strategy. Choose up to three target creature cards with a total mana value of eight or less in your graveyard. Return them to the battlefield with a Necrodermis counter on it. There are artifacts in addition to there. Yeah, that's a thing. I, Lich's, Lich's Mastery. The art is hard to miss. Where is it? I think I saw it. I thought I saw a Lich's Mastery. Right there. You can't lose the game. Oh, it's it's hexproof too. So, I mean, outside of a Toxic Deluge, I guess. Whenever you gain three life, draw that many cards. And by the way, there's a lot of Toxic Deluge being tossed around. So, Ooh. whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Okay. Whenever you lose life, for each life, one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand from the game. Oh, well, we're already doing that. So exile uh, tribal. When Lich's Mastery leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Please don't. Let's not do that. Is there a life gain strategy you actually have in mind? Is there some infinite life loop that you want to roll with? Let me know what that is first, and then I'll, I'll consider. You don't lose the game for having zero life. When you have 20 or more life, you lose the game. When you lose life, you gain two life for each one life lost. Wow. I skip over that. Uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient is in. Sanctum Weaver is too good not to play. Yeah, we're going to do all the uh, the typical shenanigans. Like this Sanctum Weaver is you tap mana. You tap for mana based on the number of enchantments you control. We should probably put Sarah's Sanctum in here. Harness Citadel can be removed. Let's just put Sarah's Sanctum it's a pretty obvious choice along with guy's cradle because this will have i didn't think we would have that many enchantments but again i think my mind is gravitating towards just like yeah let's put all the blind obedience let's put all the we're going to look at the stacks pieces in a second um all of the sort of 
a rule of law effects, maybe deafening silence. Like, I feel like this is going to go slower. We'll look over which ones are the variety we want, but yeah, we'll, we'll give that a proper look over. Creatures you control have double strike and lifelink, as well as menace, right? If they're the ones we are copying. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, stopping right there. Wound reflection. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life you lost this turn. <laughs> I wish Yawgmoth's Bargain wasn't banned. Totally play that. <laughs> Yawgmoth's Bargain would be great. Oh my gosh. That's a good card, by the way. If you've never if you've never read Yawgmoth's Bargain, that's a good card. Uh, Culling Ritual? Culling Ritual's in. It's one of the first things I put in. I didn't even know what we were trying to do, but I'm like, yeah, I feel like Culling Ritual... I feel like that's a good card. Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't that recover the enchantment, though? Don't I want it in there? Choose a card in your hand and remove it from the game. Oh my gosh. This is our... Okay, so this is the combo with Necropotence. <laughs> Maybe. Play this ability as a mana source. So... I kind of like the idea of retrieving a Cadaverous Bloom. For my graveyard. That's kind of cool. Cadaverous Bloom. Right? And then just drawing big and just dumping hand. And then getting... Oh, well, it's going to be Golgari, but we'll find something to play with. Sterling Grove is sweet. Yeah, again, feel free to hit me up with all your favorite enchantments. I'm sure they're going to be lovely in here. In here, Shieldred loves this. Loves this deck. The, the new one? Shieldred Shieldred? I'll look it up. What about the green white enchantment that gives Shroud? Um, I think that is Sterling Grove. Thank you guys. Yeah. What do you think about Nesting Dovehawk? I have no thoughts on Nesting Dovehawk. Cadaver's Bloom is a must because of coolness. Yes. Holy hells. I've not seen Cadaver's Bloom in an age. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Neither have I. By the way, this doesn't look like it was AI generated. This is like some beautiful hand-drawn shit. I, I love this, man. Um, okay. Okay. If you would gain life, you gain twice as much life instead, the whitest thing you can do in magic. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control had left the battlefield this turn, put a call a unity counter on call of unity. Uh that's kind of cute. That um you can just sort of buff your poopy army. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-zombie creature. Oh. Wait, Nicthy is not a zombie herself, right? She just makes zombies. Uh, and we get end step if there are no creatures and on on the battlefield. Wait, so this is where zombie tribal, right? We get called to the grave. Wait, is it Nick? Is, he, is she a zombie demigod? She's not, right? Ah, oh. okay, that would have been really cool if we had something. To, if we could just do this and have this pop off at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that would be really cool. Ah. It's not worth running though. It's just kind of silly. Campaign of Vengeance. That's right. I built my campaign up on vengeance. Whenever a creature you control attacks, defending player loses one life. Ooh, the aristocrat way. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. See, now that's okay. It's kind of a cool way to build up your army. So uh, someone's announcing a combo in the chat. We're gonna we're gonna read over it right now. Earthcraft plus Nix Bloom Ancient plus the Shy Soul of the World. Infinite green mana. Not great, but it is a combo made of two to three enchantments. Does no mercy work? Um, we're at Cathar's Crusade. Let me look at it really quick. We're not going to look through too many enchantments. I mean, I'm having fun just exploring the world of enchantments with you all. Whenever a creature successfully deals damage to you, destroy it. Does it work? Yeah, I mean, it works. It certainly works. It's odd. There's a judge. What is this? Ooh. Um. All you're really saying is that Krom needs to swing somewhere else, right? Like when you play that, is that what you're telling trying to tell your opponents? Can you please back off, please? Conspiracy creatures cards you own that aren't in play. Creature cards you own that aren't in play, creature spells you control, and creatures you control. Are the chosen type. Uh, let's make them zombies. Enters the battlefield, exile all artifacts your opponents control until that consulate crackdown's kind of funny, actually. Hold up. Sure, I like consulate crackdown. 
So there are stacks pieces, or hate pieces, I should say, that we might want to run just as in Tomb and uh, unmarked grave targets. Right, and then there are low to the ground stacks pieces that we will actively be casting. Dawn of the Dead. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to play. That creature gains haste until end of turn. Remove it from the game at end of turn. Sure, sure. As long as you control exactly one creature, that creature gets plus two, plus O. Oh. Mm. Yeah, we're not going to own just one creature, trust me. At the beginning of your end step, if you control exactly one creature... No. No. Stop with the one creature business. What is this trend? Whenever a player taps a land for mana... Oh, so just give it to everyone, why don't you? Group hug over here. I'm not 100% sure, says Hamahimana. But for four enchantments, Parallel Lives, Anointed Procession, Meat Hook Massacre, Wound Reflections. Isn't there a green creature enchantment spin weaver that grants uncounterable? Uh, Destiny Spinner. Destiny Spinner, I believe, is what you're talking about. Ben Rubens. I think we're both right. And yes, we're going to put Destiny Spinner in here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Whenever you draw a card and turn that card from your graveyard to your hand, you can't lose the game. Uh, uh, wow, we, we ran out of, like, room quickly here. There, there weren't that many great enchantments to cover, apparently, huh? Let's start at the bottom of the pile now. And work our way up. And let me know, you know, oh, do we bring, do we bring Urza's Saga from our graveyard? Hold up, that's kind of funny. Am I wrong? Like, we can, we can manipulate Urza's Saga twice. That's a good saga. There you go. Fine. There you go. One good saga for us to play with. <laughs> Carpet of Flowers is in. Burgeoning is not. All creatures have haste. Ooh, there's new Concordant Crossroad art. I have one or one of these. I forget if I have the Legends or the Chronicles one, but wow, that price went up. All creatures you control have haste is kind of cool. I like that. We put Deafening Silence in. Sure. Drop of Honey, still probably expensive. $400, sure, sure. Oh boy. What do we have that we really want to leverage here? Oh, Helix Pinnacle, anyone? A Helix Pinnacle win? It's maybe a little too cute. I've got a Sithis deck, says Ben Rubens. Yeah. <laughs> I bet, I bet. That's a Destiny Spinner. Yeah, you're great at this. Yeah. Me too, but I don't have a good memory. I know the cards. Nine Lives Solemnity. Right. That is a, that is a known combo. We could do that. We found the good saga. Case closed. Yeah, finally. Don't know if it's in the deck or if it's been discussed, but what about Natural Order? It is not, because I actually stopped before we hit the four CMC ones, but we can look at Natural Order together. I think it's four mana. Yeah. Um, You just want to find... Do you mean the other one, though? Do you mean the one that that one old white lady finds? And I mean white card she's white though Persia's Persia's retribution is a weird one but kind of cool makes a 4-4 four, four angel on entering so you have seven power and two bodies Persia's retribution uh, right James Cordon Crossroads is bad in the sense that it is every creature but you know if we have a way to make infinite creatures then we would want it but mind you, it's like we either get it off the attacker on ETB, so this is assuming we haven't cast her yet, right? Before the setup. Okay, we're we're moving on. Not, none of these are worth it. I, I can tell you from experience. Having researched all of these cards from making my own set this deck. I love Revelation, by the way. So gross. Uh, but what, what's grosser is Root Maze. So we'll put Root Maze in play. We'll do the root maze thing. And we're going to put... Oh, has anyone ever attacked with a reconnaissance before? Kind of cute. He just removes himself. I take it back. 
I'm sorry. Uh, you can sacrifice, you can pass on the zombie. Oh, a seal of zombie strength. I kind of like that. It's really funny. <laughs> it sort of blends perfectly with the, uh... Anicthia's ability. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell and ability and opponent controls, you may draw a card. I really wish that worked better. Like, it was kind of a cool thing, and then it just didn't. It just never did the thing that you really wanted it to do. I'm sort of skipping through here. I'm honestly just looking for anything I haven't seen before, or something that's black, um, low CMC and black, because I don't really know these colors for, again, Enchantress. Normally, when you're doing the Enchantress thing, you're just in Celestia. Whenever a green creature is put into a graveyard from play, its controller discards a card from his or her hand. Well, that will likely only hurt us. <laughs> we can bring back Blood Funnel. I like Blood Funnel a lot. Whenever you play a non-creature spell, counter the spell unless you sacrifice a creature. I mean, I like it a lot, but you gotta you gotta have token generation and really make it work. Uh, per oh hey, Call of the Ring. At the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. You just tempt, it just tempts itself, right? It's a 3-3 creature. That's kind of dope. Periphery nodes equals white drop of honey, but we don't, yeah, we, but we, do we want that? No, no, no. Yeah, they're, they're both the same. Drop of honey is a lot more expensive because it's had that one printing, and I think it's, we'll put, compost like if we're doing an enchantress thing we'll put compost because it's just a draw off of any of our other you know enchantresses creatures you control have tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool okay so i feel like cryptolith's right might be a little combo with all of our enchantment creatures maybe so the two ideas i came up with both involve activating necro for a bunch and then discarding and flickering your commander because that sounds like the most fun you can have. Are we an oppression deck? Oh boy. If you guys don't know oppression. Whenever a player plays a spell, that player discards a card from uh, his or her hand. Right. Are we an oppression deck? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. You bring back Aluren and read ahead the world spell. What? Hold up. Yeah, we just read the world spell. That's that one saga that no one liked, or at least I, I didn't like. Aluren is a card I sold, sadly. But it lets you cast uh, creatures three or less as if they had flash, right? Let's read this text instead. Any player may cast any player may cast creature spells with mana value three or less without paying their mana cost as if they had flash. So get that, Timna. Treat yourself to that, Thrasios. Cryptolith Rite with a board and a fall of Thran sounds hilarious. I'll put Cryptolith Rite on the sideboard for now. I don't think it's bad. And I don't know what fall of Thran does, so I'd have to look that up. But uh, I'm, I'm in a shenanigans. <laughs> fall of Thran. Destroy all lands. That's right. We don't need them. Each player returns two land cards from their... Graveyard to the battlefield. So, a oh, Fall of Thran for five. You float your mana, and then you kill Fall of Thran, or you sacrifice it to something, right? And then no one gets their lands back. That's just, that's just mean. Tap an untapped creature you control, untap target basic land. Remember, we're not running any basics because I decided that would be fun. Each creature has protection from its colors. Uh, that's cute, but probably not what we want. Frey Elise's Charm. Girl with a Gap Tooth. Do we run her? Nah, probably not. Whenever you cast a spell that shares a creature type, ah, a creature type thing. Oppression puts things in our graveyard and we have enchantress. Ah, vegan. Vegan, vegan, vegan. Okay, so Ben Rubin says, Frang Omnipotence and Warlock Class. are a win. Let's see if that's true. Each player loses half their life, then discards half cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control, round up each time. Each each player? And then, okay, so what's Warlock class doing for us? 
At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. When this class becomes level two, look at the top three. I haven't even thought to look into classes. Jeez Louise. Look at the top three cards of your library. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to its... Ah, uh, blood. You're you're all right. You're not late. We're 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 working away here. New Calyx. We can put new Calyx in. We can put. I was literally about to type new Calyx in. It's Calyx uh, guided by fate, right? I like new Calyx. We a chains deck. So technically, I get what you're saying with oppression, and it it makes sense to me. Like we don't have the draw in the command zone is my only issue, but yeah, we are gonna be running. I should just put it in the deck. We're going to be running Sithis, Harvest Hand. We're going to be running Argothian Enchantress. What are the other Enchantresses? I'm just sort of just waiting for them to pop up. I totally forget all of them. Oh, my bad. I think it could be everyone. Yeah, yeah. The fact that it's everyone really hurts. What's the commander do, Pats? I'm sorry I'm late. Much love, fam. Uh, the commander doesn't do much. Anicthea brings back enchantments from our graveyard when she's cast. Right, so on ETB, as well as when she attacks. And she has menace. And all enchantment creatures you have have menace. So go to town, I guess? We can do a shrine thing. <gasps> Greater Oromancy. Other enchantments you control off shroud. Enchanted creatures you control off shroud. Nah. <coughs> We're not going to ground seal ourselves. Sorry. It's not happening. The combo's like 14 mana. I know, it's rough. Pat laughing at my ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're good. What'd you say, Pa? Yeah, you can call me Dad. You can call me Dad if you want. There's also a demon with that effect, but only works if they have an even life total, I think. Eidolon of Blossoms. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Are you just shouting out the, um... I want them. I want them. Give me all the enchantresses. Give them to me. Mesa and Ench Mesa Enchantress is the weird one though, right? Doesn't the thing have to go into the yard? I mean, we'll use it. I feel like it might be useful here, but Eidolon from the battlefield. Oh, I just did Eidolon of Blossoms. Whoopsies. Uh, Verdurin? Verdurin Enchantress? Is this a one that draws you cards? <laughs> Eidolon of Blossoms, Citizen Champions one. Yes, it is. And we did set this already, so they're all down there. Let me let me save and continue so we all have this. Interesting. Does it need to be cast or just ETB? Are Fiend Hunter loops good here? So the way it works is she'll exile it and then copy it. And that's sort of the issue we're running into here because it's not very easy to set up combos with copies of things, sadly. Femrith Enchantress is when an enchantment dies. Femrith, thank you, thank you, thank you, vegan. Uh, Luminarch Ascension, anyone? Sure. Oh, Luminarch Ascension would be kind of cute. I mean, look, we're not, I don't know how well Luminarch Ascension is going to perform in this particular list, but I'll put it there. Mark of Asylum. Ooh, look at that golden coin. Prevent all non chemo damage that would be dealt to creatures you control. Ooh. Mastery of the Unseen. Whenever a you control is turned face up. Ooh. Don't want that. Don't want that. Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Nah, it's just still not good enough. Noble Heritage. Okay, nope. So, can we, can we, we need to think about combos, don't we? We should have a combo talk. We should have a discussion about closing out the game. It's probably a good idea, right? Like, we, we want to do that. We want to win somehow. We put Sanctum Weaver in. Seal away. You got to seal away. Um, We have the seals in. Just not that one. Right. Oh, snap. Janky. Yeah. Yeah, she's a little janky. I, I think the more I sit here, I thought that something would come to me as we sat here, but no. Not really. Ooh, squandered resources as well. Sacrifice the land and ramp like a mother. Sterling Grove we put in. I think we're going to put Survival of the Fittest in. Sylvan Library is already in. Survive. I'm not actually know how many creatures we have. I don't need that. 
Uh, people really like Meat Hook Massacre, so I'll put the Meat Hook Massacre in. There might be a combo, combo mambo with this, because we could just add Leon in loops if we brought this back from the grave, right? Exquisite and Sanguine um, from the grave, right? Well, I don't really mean, like, here's my issue with this deck, like... It's very, very slow. Like, her ability is prohibitive. It's not really giving us what we everything we need in the instance we need it. It's going to give us this trickling out effects that might be of value. And in the same way, it's almost like Calyx, like, doubling down on things. Like, if our thing gets destroyed, we can bring it back with her. And that's what I mean. We don't necessarily have two, we just have the one. And then we get a copy of the one. So, not even that... I, Calyx is kind of... Better by way of effect. Just even if it's copy once per turn. But again, we can we can do the thing. We can get things that say uh, if a creature has a triggered ability, do it again. Uh, I think someone even mentioned a card, Weaver of Harmony, lets you copy your triggers and, and itself. Thank you. Right, sorry, I meant to put that in here. Um, I was I looked at it, I read it, and then I thought about it, and I did I acted on it. Uh, I did not act on it. But there you go, Weaver of Harmony. Any good self mill? See, so yes, there was a suggestion for some self mill. Heliod Ballista. Ugh, I hate that Abzan is relying on Heliod Ballista. I again, oh, so Aura of Silence is going in. Let's just stop there. Oh, what's the little boy? Archivist of Agma. Not a little boy. He's a gnome. He's a. He's not a gnome. There was a gnome from that same set. I don't know. He's archivist of Ogma is going in though. That's a good draw engine, I think. Could be good. Esper Sentinels going in. It's just sort of a must. I can't think of any other draw engines immediately outside of. I mean, we already are running a bunch, so we're probably good. Or a shard. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. You know, this might be the one list I might want to run it, but I'm even running in Sethis. Oh, girl, Anixia, what are we? What are we doing? What do you want to do with Nick? Do you tell me? Okay, maybe play kind of along the same lines of Winota, Elish Norn, accrue value in hate bear stacks and eventually swing to win, swing and win, abuse turning stacks into enchantments and threats. Yeah. Yeah, little, a little slow ball, but yeah, I, I, I get it. It's like what, you know, the main complaint about this deck, it's like, so you're bringing stuff back from your graveyard that are solely enchantments, huh? That's cool. It's It would be really cool if there were amazing enchantments to leverage, but it's sad that really the thing that I want to use the most is Necropotence. And this is not Xur. Like, I, it's just easier to play Xur and put it on the battlefield than it is to Entomb and then reanimate her. Although I will state that it you get to do the thing with immediacy as a, as opposed to, you know, Xur being on the battlefield and potentially shot down. So there is that. Criminal past. Ooh. Creature gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Ooh. Interesting. Very interesting. Dothy Embrace. I've never seen this card. I've never seen this. Target creature gain shadow until end of turn. I don't know if we need much more evasion, but I like it. Okay. Did you put out of time? I did. And if you want to follow along with the list, um, I have it updated. You should be able to check it out in the description. We have 72 cards. Dual nature is infinite creatures by itself. Stop. Shut the front door. I think Archivist is a grown man that pays his bills. <laughs> this is drunk logic. <laughs> Well, we don't know if he pays his bills, but he could be a grown, he could be a, I don't know, I read that as grown ass man. I just like, it's a grown ass man. Yeah, he might be. I don't know. I really don't know. Whenever creature control attacks, put a charge counter on this. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not Najila. We, we ain't doing that. Eidolon of, uh, ooh, Enchantress Presence. I don't think we put Enchantress's Presence in here. Did we? Y'all missed one. I'm kidding. You guys are great. I really appreciate all of everyone's help. This is okay. Let me just say that this has been 
my brain is like having is passing so much gas and it's not the bubbles from trader joe's sparkling raspberry lime water not a sponsor that's giving it those bubbles it's just having so many farts over this deck it's passed gas several times during the stream because i don't i can't that was the issue with sit this and like this has black in it too so it's like we have the tutors like ugh, just, but like what what is it trying to do that's unique to it that it can do from the CZ and really not not that much <laughs> not that much Nickthea I wanted more for you demonic tutor vampiric tutor imperial seal what's weird is like after we add these sort of staple cards like we haven't put soul ring mana crypt after we add all these things uh, I don't know how much room we really have. So we need to take a step back and look at combos that we could employ. You know, Heliod Ballista is, is a thing. So we might as well. But I also just like the animate. Again, we're not trying to avoid auras necessarily. We can do, we can recover our Meat Hook Massacre, leave it on the battlefield and do uh, Leon and Relic Warder animate dead loop. Like those are very easy to set up. Even if we wanted to use necromancy for that, we could like flash it in, right? And do the thing. That would be really cool. But what's the one where you need to sacrifice a creature in search? It is... I played it the other night. Let me know if you know. It's the one of uh, diabolic intent. Diabolic intent. I think those are all the really great generic black tutors that we can use. Wishclaw Talisman. Right. Um, we're going to do Enlightened Chucha. In case we do do the Animate Dead Loop with Lean and Relic Water. I'll just put Lean and Relic Water in because it's good. And I'll put Animate Dead. Let's just commit. Let's commit to the bit. We've got the Meat Hook Massacre in there, so we do have a combo. If we're filling the yard, we can actually run Mausoleum Secrets. Uh, Twisted Sky. So we are technically, we are technically filling the yard, but not, not like, I'm sorry if I'm really loud. I feel like last time we did a stream, I was, I was very loud and this was the mic was right next to me. So forgive me. Run all the archetypes. So dual nature and anything that pings. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to take a step back. Twilight Night. I just got, I just got thrown off by my own. My own sorrow for Anikthea. But you might be you might be right. Let's see what you've got there. You said dual nature. Dual nature. Whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under enters the battlefield, excuse me, its controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. <gasps> Whatever a non-token creature leaves the battlefield, all X uh, what? Whenever a non-token creature leaves the battlefield. When dual nature leaves the battlefield, wait. Oh, Oh, you sweet, beautiful knight. Who suggested this? Twilight Knight? So, technically, whenever a non-token creature leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens of the same name as that creature. That's so funny. Yeah, dual nature's in. Oh my god, finally, you so you cracked the code. You did it. <laughs> Wait, does that work? Great. Whenever you're not talking, yeah. It ETBs, it sees itself because it's a token creature. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its control creates a token that's a copy of that creature. No, that doesn't work. Wait, what? Does that what? Huh? Okay, what were you what were you suggesting with this? So with dual nature and anything that pings on ETB, like Elias Ilcor is a win any good backgrounds uh drunk i don't know personally run all the archetypes right i think there's a triple green enchantment that draws us a card whenever a three three enters what oh you mean power draws uh maybe maybe mausoleum secrets is fine i don't know if we're feeling the graveyard in that way twisted sky uh be happy be happy about heliod ballista otherwise i will mention ether flux yeah we can do ether flux as well Entomb is in. Razaketh is not. Grim Guardian, Dual Nature. Grim Guardian. Did you have any thoughts on Nether Void? I might have missed Nether Void. 
Thank you, Twilight Knight. Yeah, am I missing something? Does it work or no? I really wish it did. I wish it was a token creature, but then wouldn't that always just that just trigger off of everything, right? It's also a copy of the thing, so. Dual nature needs a creature to be non-token, and Ichthia makes tokens. <laughs> Whenever a player cut, thank you, uh, Vegan, for spelling it out for myself and the audience. I got really excited, and I'm like, wait, no, no. The update says non-token that wasn't on the printed version. Oh. Whenever a player casts a spell, counter it unless that player pays three. Ooh. A world enchantment. So my issue with this card is that it's a world enchantment. Someone might play another world enchantment into it, and then we would have to, you know, remove it. Super type world. Um, also, I just don't own a copy, and they're very expensive, but... <laughs> I think Nether Void is a good card. I mean, it's Staxy. Uh, wait, I just had the dual nature is yeah. We're gonna we're gonna remove that. Okay. Oh, you know what we should do? we should, let's just add the fast mana suite. We're gonna add the Chrome Mox. We're gonna add the Mana Vault. Add an Arcane Signet. Yes. Seriously. Sadly. Chrome Mox. Mox Diamond, you say? Yes, Mox Diamond. Not Mox Amber. What else? Uh, jeweled Lotus, anyone? What's a perfect list for the Jeweled Lotus? Yes, worth its price in gold. Lotus Petal, maybe? Mm, yes, all the artifacts. Love them. Optional says... Oh, yeah, Anime Dead Creature. Uh, where is that? Where, 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 where? where? Animated dead? No, we don't want that. I know what that is. Uh, another void's one word though, right? Am I crazy? We'll add another void for now, and we'll see about removing it if it doesn't fit. What happens with Nether Void being a creature? World creature. My head explodes. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing. About it. Um, what happens with Nether Void being a world creature? <laughs> Only one way to find out. Whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. Just give it to him. Oh, food chain. Do we run food chain? Nope. Ghostly prison. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two. That's right. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one -one hold up. No. Yeah, it's all the non-token business. Okay, so are we... Let's 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 talk, you and I. Are we trying to? Ah! Okay, it's not coming off. Hope you enjoyed that. Wait, he's gonna kill me. There's like something. There's something on my lens. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's good. That's the spot, isn't it? Let me know how that feels. Oh, yeah, it's not gone. Okay, well I'm gonna take some cleaning solution to that later. You can't tell. But let's let's have that talk. What what do we want to run for a combo? So there's Meat Hook Massacre in here, and that is part of an aristocrat strategy, like a creature dies, you ping everyone one damage. Okay. We do that with Animate Dead slash Lean and Relic Water. Cool. We can do that. That's a thing. Heliod Ballista. Three mana three mana plus the four mana plus the life link. It's a lot, right? Right? Is that the cost of it all it's a lot to set up we are in green and b by extension golgari so we technically have we do technically have chain of smog with a bloom apprentice and that's sort of the lowest to the ground easiest to set up the new drana linvala in living plane I think Witherbloom Apprentice Chain of Smog might be like the easiest thing to hit. Activated blues creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. So obviously they're still left with their rocks, right? I do like the Nudrana Linvala. If she was a legendary enchantment creature, I might be more inclined. But she's not, okay? 
all of gemstone until end of turn each mana producing land produces mana of the chosen color instead of its normal color um just include humility and watch everyone head explode as they try to figure out how it's going on what, what's going on <laughs> humility is so good guys all creatures lose all abilities and have base power and toughness one one um that's so funny yeah lean in animate dead yeah we, we're on lean in um Braulio. we're on that we need ranger, ranger captain of eos ranger captain i don't know why i said it like that um i love ranger captain i'm a, a big fan of his yes ranger captain of eos and we'll also add silence <laughs> speaking of ranger captain what are your thoughts on token doublers mondrak anointed procession etc 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 i don't know mondrak so let's look at it oh yeah this is the the body that does it i like them i would stick with the let's stick with the ones that are enchantment based right Let's stick with the ones that are enchantment based because they sort of play into our sub strategy of our enchantress sub strategy. And speaking of, because it's so important, I think that we are going to run worldly tutor. Like it's important that we hit. I should be wearing my glasses. I can't see worldly tutor, and then we're going to also run the uh, what is the green Slesnia creature finder? Ah, uh, what is it? It's in Eladomri's call. How can I forget about my man Eladomri? Right. It's important that we find at least one Enchantress early on. So we're going to want all that. Noxious Revival. There are just certain green staples I feel like we should put in. Veil vale of Summer. And we should also put in Assassin's Trophy. And the other one, Abrupt Decay. And outside of that, I'll save this and see where we're at. We should probably add in our own toxic deluge. We do want some form of removal. I think a dam is in order as well. Having a dam would be good. We're going to have to cut some cards, but we still need to add in a lot. A lot. But let's look into those token doublers. I, I like them. I like them because it gives us the most value out of our enchantments, right? At least off of the Nycthia. I don't know how much I like them, but I do like them. Yes, humility. <laughs> I certainly groves in. We can add humility. I mean, it just it just ruins things. But yes. Oh, uh, do we want? Are we going to be mana starves? Maybe we run smothering tithe. If it's good enough for casual, it's good enough for competitive. That's not how that works. Um, let me read this. Hmm. Okay. Should we run Worldly Tutor? I just put it in are you saying we shouldn't i usually do not run it if i do not know exactly what i want also winds of abandon is better than dam and toxic deluge i don't think so so winds of abandon uh for you guys it's an overload card excel target creature you don't control each creature exiled this way it's control researches our library for a basic land uh, dam is just single target remover, uh, removal or a board wipe, and then toxic deluge is just board wipe. There are some instances where we just need to, we just need to kill board. Thing is, Anicthia is rather big, isn't she? She's a 4-4. Four, four. So we'll kill most things. We're not going to kill the uh, opposing Kroms or Kenriths or, I don't know, who, who are we facing? But we'll get rid of most of the low end of the board to include our own stuff. But then the beauty of it is that we can bring back other stuff, right? So we're going to hard cast some of these enchantments too. It's not like we're going to bring back everything um, via some sort of entomb reanimate line of play. I say, again, it's not a reanimate. 
Ooh, a pernicious deed on a body, anyone? Destroy each creature. That'd be kind of cute. All right, ah, oh, recurring nightmares. Okay, Solemnity Devoted Druid. Solemnity Devoted Druid. Let's look up Solemnity. There there are, counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, and lines of control. A Devoted Druid gains you life. Someone suggested another Solemnity line of play earlier. I forget what it was, but there are a few things that work with the counters can't be put on things. This would ruin a Heliod Ballista line of play, but we would remove it, obviously, before we did anything. I agree with Pat. I love Toxic Deluge. I, I like it, too. I think that it depends. Worldly Tutor is in there because I just want to make sure, like, if we're playing a game that's relying on our 99 so heavily to for draw, right? Like, because everything else is... We don't have a commander that draws, and we're going to need to gain and somehow. So I want to make sure that I hit Sithis. And we've got an influx of uh, enchantments to where I feel like we're going to get 28. I feel like we're going to get some draw off of these creatures, not to mention any sort of enchantment creatures we have in the list, right? To include Anicthia herself. So if we play Sithis out earlier and then play Anicthia, that's a draw. I would definitely worldly tutor one of our uh, enchantresses and maybe Argothian enchantress first, but... I'm just making sure that they all work for us. Whenever you cast enchantment, Mason Enchantress, sure. Nylius Colossus. Okay, so the combo line I'm kind of relying on here, I think, will probably be Heliod Ballista. Only because it plays into it plays into the deck. So it's the Sun Crown, I think, and Walking Ballista. Walking Ballista works well with this because we can use Ranger Captain to find it. We'll also run the Animate Dead, uh, Dance of the Dead line of play. We're actually on Necromancy, I think. Necromancy. Let's just do Necromancy and Animate Dead. I think that's probably fine enough. Um, but I do think that we need to add in at least one more. We should add in one more payoff. Because Meat Hook Masker by itself is not enough, in my opinion. Ooh. Well, now I'm thinking, like, what, what should the payoff look like? I think I put a Blind Obedience in here, but there's no good way to extort off of this. That is amazing. That is so good. Are you seeing this art? What? Uh, that's so good. Artifacts and creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield is tapped. This is obviously for the Dockside Extortionist of the world, but, you know, obviously. Obviously. I'm okay on this build so far. The, again, the only clear lines of play are the Heliod and Ballista and then anime, the triple the triple card combo. I almost feel like it might be worth putting in a Buried Alive pile, just because they're easier to get to. You know, if we did um, the Asmo, the Asmo Ooze line, right? So if you know the Asmo Ooze line, what's nice about it is that you you draw a deck. If you would draw a card, exile the top card of your library instead, right? So what you do is you have Necrotic Ooze, Asmodeus, and Scourge Familiar, and provided you have at least three cards in hand to discard for black with Necrotic Ooze, you're able to use draw seven cards to draw through your deck, right? It's a mono black combo. It works here though. What I like about it is that it's manipulating discard and um, drawing through our deck. So we're able to fill up our graveyard with things we need. I think it's uh, Scourge Familiar says discard, right? I really hope so. Otherwise uh, we're SOL. Scourge, yeah, discard a card, add a black. So what we could do is if Anicthia is out, we can do Necrotic Ooze, the line of play, discard our value engines, get Cadaverous Bloom, attack with Anicthia, get Cadaverous Bloom, and then we're able to pitch cards on our hand for double black or double green instead. Actually, no, it's not a creature in the graveyard. Whoops, that would have been really cool if Necroticus could copy this effect. It can definitely not, though. But that way we can storm into the effective win, right? If we don't already have it in our hand. This is not a ad nauseum list uh, by any stretch, but sadly, Cadaverous Bloom, neither Cadaverous Bloom nor the Scourge Familiar play into 
a win con with Heliod Ballista, but they will play into a win con with our uh, Animate Dead. So just keep the Animate Dead in hand and set up the loop with Meat Hook Massacre. So we don't even need Cadaverous Bloom necessarily, but I still think that this is a good reanimate target. I keep saying reanimate. A copy, a copy paste target for Anicthea <laughs> from Exile for the cards we should be drawing with our list. I think that Asmo Ooze makes sense for this deck is, is what I'm saying. So I want to try to include it. If it feels sluggish, then we won't manipulate it. But Buried Alive will still be good for just value creatures as well. Um, as Modius is useless outside of this line of play, though, I would say. Necroticus is always okay value. And then uh, Scourge Familiar. Scourge Familiar is fine. Again, if, if we're drawing, then we're we're able to manipulate it. Cruelty of Gix is great utility. Um, let's see if that's true or, true, true or not. Cruelty? Cruelty of Gix. Where are you, Gix? The Cruelty of Gix, you mean? Read ahead. Uh, I'll just start with the first one, actually. Thank you very much. I try not to skip over my reading. Target opponent reveals their hand to choose it. Mm, never mind. Search your library for a card, put the card into your hand, then shuffle. Uh, that's kind of cool. As a tutor, you could just... Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. So I see what you're saying. You're saying, like, if we enicthead this on the attack, the idea being... Uh, we can only have so many things we want to bring back with Anicthea, though, because the game is trying to end at a CDH table at least by turn three, if not sooner, and will probably extend to six or seven, depending on what's going on. Like, if you're if we're running a lot of stacks and there's a control player, then maybe we'll, we'll get the ball rolling and all that. Put our creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That's not so bad. Sanguine Bond, Exquisite Blood. Both can be brought back if they get removed. So, right. If you guys haven't seen this, isn't there a creature that also does the same thing? Vito? Vito? I believe his name is. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then the other card for this combo, Exquisite Blood. Blah. Exquisite Blood. Mm. Losing my mind, don't mind me. Exquisite blood, yes, mm, delicious. Mm, I love it. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. So my qualm with this is, yes, it works in tandem with what we're trying to do, but it's so, so costly. And it does require... It does require life loss to get the ball rolling. Dina? You want Dina in the deck. My girl steep in souls over here. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses life. Yeah, there you go. Shoot. Yeah. Why don't we just play Dina? Sacrifice another creature. Dina is soul steeper, gets plus X plus O until end of turn. Our X is sacrifice creature power. Sure. I think that with this, though, we could probably cut this down and take a look at setting up Asmo Ooze lines of play. We're going to remove some of our lands first here, though, because we did add Sarah's Sanctum, right? Right, we did. Okay, Sarah Sanctum, good. Yes, good. Yes, Sarah Sanctum. We like. I think we're going to remove just one land. We should be at 30 already. Did we? Oh, we added Urza's Saga. We did add Urza's Saga. Well, I honestly don't know which land we remove. I think we're an even split on everything. So I'm just going to get rid of the one I think is going to be the least useful. And that will be... Probably the Bayou equivalent. No, let's just... Okay, let's take out... It's funny because we, we have... Um, I'll take that out. Exotic Orchard. We have Menace on our, our important creature. So, like, Forbidden Orchard doesn't bother me. Like, if I give people blockers, like... That's not going to be an issue. Uh, Christopher Rodriguez, thank you for subscribing to the channel. I appreciate that. I don't always notice those. Squirrel's Nest, Earthcraft is lame, but both are enchantments and ex and exist. <laughs> Vegan. <laughs> but that's all That's all the prerequisites for Anicthea's combos or Anicthea's finishers are... Is it a combo in these colors that are enchantment-based and does it exist? That's all we're really looking for. 
We have the Deluge. Again, you can switch this out if you want. Like if you were suggesting Winds of Abandon, um, Dasva, if you want to do that, I would suggest, you know, just opting that out for Toxic. I would still keep Damn though as good single target removal. I think in these three colors, Abzan, it's it's flexible enough. Culling Ritual is amazing. Always run it. Uh, we're not on any other rituals, and we probably should be. I, I think we should be on Dark Ritual, if not Dark and Cabal Ritual. Which we can make way for. We do need to cut some cards here. I just want to see what we have so far as interaction suite is concerned. Not much by way of interaction. We could probably put more in here, but I do just want to rely heavily on our early game stacks pieces, and that will kind of be our mm -hmm. removal. So reveal the top four cards of your library and put an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. I feel like Vessel's fine, but it's not going to do enough. I don't I don't think we need that kind of digging. If this were One Piece TCG, I would say yes. Legion Loyalty. Um, so this is the Myriad trick. Like I, I like that it works. I don't think that Legion Loyalty is something that I'm going to actively be aiming for because we don't have a self-mill strategy. I do think Song of the World Soul, whenever you cast a spell Populate, I do think that that will be effective at building out an army but more importantly if we've made a token copy of anything else that's like damning our opponents then we want to like double down on that right i want as many auras of silence as i can get right making artifacts and enchantments people play two or more like that just shuts down any sort of ad nauseum play after the fact right so getting to double down on those might be good song of the world soul i feel like it will or will not be effective depending on how we play the deck and right now I can say it's probably the top end so far as like copy paste Anicthia casting. Consulate Crackdown I put in here because I thought it was cute. I don't think it's great though, because really what it boils down to is you're going to exile someone's tapped mana vault and then when they determine it's the right time to nature's claim it or whatever they have, uh, they'll bounce it. Well, actually, because we're probably bringing it back as a copy, so it's a token, they could just bounce it with an effect and it would just you know disappear into the ether and we would never have it again. I think Nether Void is not for this deck necessarily. And a Humility is really goofy, but I don't know if I necessarily want to run it over anything else. Although I don't necessarily want to remove very many more enchantments outside of that. I do think Cadaver's Bloom is good, though, as a potential reanimate spell. Copy paste spell. Right, if my hand is telling me that I can go for something, then I would really want all the mana going into it. And that brings me back to Wither Bloom Apprentice Chain of Smog. So would you guys really okay, help me out here. Is Root Maze good in here? Uh, Root Maze is just very low to the ground stacks. Artifacts and lands come into play tapped. It slows things down really heavily. I don't suggest we play it unless we've established a board first, right? But like, get the carpet of flowers out and stuff first. Or we're going to rely on wild growth and um, Utopia Sprawl for ramp. So we should be okay after the fact. But I like Root Mazing people down. But I think that we should have a discussion over which is one of our finishers. So we have Animate Dead plus the Meat Hook Massacre. And I did not add any other combos for it outside of that, I don't think. But do you would you rather do which should we do? Should we do Apprentice plus Chain of Smog or Ballista Heliod? Which would you prefer in the deck? I'm very curious. What I like about the Apprentice Chain of Smog is that we, we have silence effects. It doesn't really feed into... Ranger Captain of Eos can grab Walking Ballista. Sure, fine, that's great. Um, we're also going to be hunting down our enchantments, right? So Heliod Suncrown is nice because it gives us draw off of our package of enchantresses. And we do have tutors for it. I mean, tutors, we have one tutor for it. We just put in, um, that's not true. All of our creature tutors can find it too. So it's not a difficult combo to set up. Chain of Smog is probably one of the harder things to find as a sorcery. Sorcery? Sorcery. But Witherbloom Apprentice is easy to find.
But whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Like this is sort of aristocratic style play line, but it's using Magecraft instead. Chain of Smog works because you can just target yourself. Now the only issue is you want to make sure you have a silence go off or just protect yourself before you go into this. But what I like is that the combo plays into colors that we're producing, right? Like it plays into our Cadaverous Bloom. It plays into our Scourge Familiar. I think that it just makes a little bit more sense. It's also just for CMC to assemble. But again, you are really, you got, you're throwing it out there. Like if it fails, you fail. So be very wary of the fact. Hey, Mordai. I have Rune Maze. Rune Maze is fine, Blood. I, we, I don't know if we keep it or not, but why not? Por que no los dos? Ballista is a good card outside. Yeah. Why not both? Um, I don't really care that Ranger Captain has two targets necessarily. Well, I do care. That's a lie. It's just a silence on a body, moreover. Oh, shoot. Thank you for the Weaver of Harmony suggestion, people. I totally forgot. But yeah, this is such a good card for the list. Uh, copy target activator triggered ability control uh, of an enchantment source. So you can double down on your anything, like Aura of Silence, your Nycthea, obviously. Oh, it's very, very good in this list and a definite must. It's also an enchantment itself. Really, really helpful for uh, Enchanter's decks. Is that Forgotten Realms white creature that ETBs to fetch an enchantment the top of library any good? Sorry, I forget the name. Um, I, I think it's 3CMC, which you're referring to. I don't know if it's essential because we're in black, but I, I think that with um, Leon and Relic Warder and our Animate Dead, that's sort of the main line of play with Meat Hook Massacre because it's very easy to cast as well. Like we could literally, with the... Um, Asmo Ooze line of play, that's technically, because we're going to set up most of these things with Asmo Ooze. So if we set that up, we would do discard Land and Relic Order, obviously, cast Meat Hook Massacre for two black. We don't need to care about anything else at that point. And we're also filling our hand up, so we should be able to just go for it, right? And in much the same sense, Chain of Smog, we should be able to just go for it, right? Especially if we've set up the Scourge Asmo Ooze line to get there. Moonbless Cleric. I don't think it is uh, blood, but it's a fine suggestion. Both combos are bad and boring. <laughs> yeah. D so, yes. Das, I, I have to say, they are both bad and boring. I think people are leaning towards Apprentice in Chain of Smog, so I'm just going to sideline these for now. I think that they're efficient and can win games, and that's maybe the only reason I care to consider them. But I can understand your like distaste for them um uh, with a bloom apprentice what am i doing but yeah this is we're trying to make this a cdh build as much as possible but it we'll see if it gets there i think that it's it's sad like even incorporating black into this list i feel like i would rather just play sithis which is odd to say culling ritual for the mass mana um, yeah, I mean, we don't, so what's weird though is like when you see Culling Ritual and other lists, they're like, they're trying to pop off with an Adnaz or something. Culling Ritual here is a little odd. I also want to put Dark Ritual in. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier, but it's a good way to get her out. I also think that Opposition Agent is probably worth uh, considering in the deck as well. That's one, thanks. A Merchant Zone for a land. Um, Merchantson, maybe, yeah. Ben Rubens, I gotta go, but happy brewing and have a nice night. Ben, thank you for helping out with the brew. Take care. Um, I am ready to square this one away so we can play test it and then, uh, see if it was worth, see if it was worth brewing for. And answer the question, is Anicthia any good as a commander? Because we'll see. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. I want to keep... It's weird that I'm sidelining the Ranger Captain, but, like, I just don't feel like it's... A worthy include i and i again that's weird to say but i feel like i'd rather just the op the opposition agent in its place like that feels like a better cast in my opinion okay all of these seem playable maybe not the fell stone we don't have that much ramp going for us to be frank hmm
Mm, that's not entirely true. We have a little bit of ramp by way of rocks and then our enchant auras here. Uh. Right. This has been this has been interesting, vegan. I don't know if that this is any better than Miracle or not. And again, like there might be a a, a strategy that we're just not employing. I'm Miracle, yeah. There might be a strategy that we're not employing that involves enchantments, but I'm not immediately seeing it, you know? So it's not to say that there isn't something outside of Chain of Smog and uh, Wither Bloom Apprentice, but I mean, the thing is, we'll get there. It's just that, is this deck doing the strategy any better than any other list? And I can't rightly say. Coloring Ritual is great, but... No, we still want it. <laughs> Eidolon of Blossoms is kind of costly, and so I'm going to take her out. And I don't really want to take out any other enchantments. Not really. I do think that Song of the World Soul is nice, but like we're really trying to... Without Self Mill going... We're really not pulling that much from our graveyard. That's not getting placed there by itself, right? Like a seal of cleansing. You know what I mean? I'm going to sideline the Cadaverous Bloom for now. I think that Smothering Tithe is probably just better. And if they pay the tax, you know what I mean? Like, you're happy for them paying too. So it's not the end of the world if you don't get that treasure. Um, we do have these goofy babies over here. I do think that Nyx Bloom Ancient and uh, <laughs> the Nylea's Colossus are probably just a, a dream. Whenever Nylea's Colossus or another enchantment enters the battlefield under control, double target creatures, power and toughness till end of turn. I think that's cool, but not enough to help us push through for a win. Not in the same way as our other combos are concerned. Is Eidolon of Rhetoric in the list? I believe so. No, it is not. Hmm. I mean, it could be. We have a deafening silence in right now. We don't really have many other rule of law effects. Right. And we're going to favor the enchantment based ones, despite how good Archon of Ameria is. So, I mean, technically we could put a lot of rhetoric in here or rule of law. Hmm. I would argue that rule of law is better. Just because we can cast Rule of Law, it's not a creature, so it's not as squishy. And then when it goes away, we can bring it back. We can maybe put Rule of Law in over our... Let's just see how this performs as it is. Let's start there, actually. Uh, but let's see here. All right. Is Drana Linvala a good include? It shuts off tap creatures and you, and you get them all. Right. Uh, Dronalyn Vala is great. Like, if you guys want to run Dronalyn Vala, by the way, we can close this poll out. Dronalyn Vala is amazing. We talked about this one in our tier list uh, that I mentioned earlier. Like, this is a really fantastic card. I think it's meta dependent. It shuts off of, you know, our, our opponents off of their Najilas, their Kenras, their. Thrasios is uh, like a lot of different creatures, and then obviously dorks, as you've mentioned. I think that it's probably not necessary for this list. That's not even true. Like, it could go in. I just don't know where we would want to slot it specifically. But I would say it's a good include if you decide you want to include it. When Gloom Trigger enters the battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh. Ooh. So that's so weird. So is this what you're... I have an Eternal Witness in. If Gloomshrieker would die, exile it instead. I was going to say, it's cool that we could potentially double down on this, but then it, it exiles itself, right? Familiar Ground seems nice with all of the menacing enchantments uh, as uh, a closer. I like Gloomshrieker a lot, just for the art. I don't know if it's... It's better than Eternal Witness because it gives us draw. So I'll put Gloom Shrieker in. Thank you for that suggestion. That's super dope. It is a permanent specifically. 
So Eternal Witness is a little bit better, but I think that because we're relying on permanent base solutions to win the game, we could say that these two are a one-to-one -one trade. Did I not put Eternal Witness in? Well, this is going to make cutting another card interesting. Oh, you don't like it anymore? Well, let's sideboard it so the world knows that it's an option. Did I? I guess I didn't. Okay. Let me some rule of law. Well, let's be positive about it. There's a second commander, and sometimes that one is much better. Oh, are you referring to... Uh, are you referring to our one of the legends in our list here, or do you mean Linval and uh, Drana? Because they're great. I, I Again... I would say, here, I'll put it on the sideboard. You could definitely include them. Was Dryad of Illyssian uh, considered? So this is the one that's like color fixing, right? You may play an additional land. Each turn lands you control have uh, are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Well, there's no sense in running single lands if you're not running Taint and Pack, so we're going to shove that in there really quick because I just have the land base for it. Dried of the Ilsean Grove. I think it's good. I don't think we need the fixing necessarily because our land base is pretty tight, but um, you can add it. I think if our, if our commander was the Enchantress, then I'd be more interested in running a lot more enchant uh, enchantments. But because the package really is relying on things that are self-sacrificing to go in the grave, things that are just going to get hated out and can be recovered with the Nyctia, or things that are going to be entombed, so it's like, and we don't have a self-mill strategy running, we're not going to see too many of these things outside of planting them there ourselves. And I don't even feel like we're going to cast a Nyctia until mid to late, provided we need her. Right. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question and maybe a few more questions. Uh, Calyx Guided by Fate's pretty dope here. I don't know if he's absolutely necessary for this deck strategy because is it whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control? So we didn't need to cast it. We can technically get four fours out of him. It's not bad. And then we can double down when an enchanted creature attacks. Enchanted creature. So here's the issue with the second half of the ability. We don't really have enchanted creatures. We have enchantment creatures. I'll take him out for now. This is 100 cards. Let's go. I need to know. Was this worth everyone's time making? I gotta, I gotta know. So this isn't horrible. Uh, it's like... This deck is slow. We've already established that, right? It has protection for when we decide to go off. We can grab a Buried Alive. We don't have the Reanimate for the Asmo Ooze line of play, which would be great, but we don't. We could hit a Draw Utility. Honestly, um, this is not the deck you necessarily want to mulligan aggressively with, just by virtue of the fact that it's it's slow. And it's like, if you watch my Belby game over on CDH TV, You'll know with stacks list or list that should be doing a very specific thing early on, you can't mulligan that much. But I do want to find like the perfect, the perfect hand. I would say that this is fairly good. It gets us somewhere. I would want to find a draw utility like Sylvan Li Library or Necropotence. And I think we're probably just going to shoot for Necropotence here. If this was a dark writ instead, maybe that would be better, but... This hand's just awkward because it wants to do one of three things. So I'll ship it for now. Argothian Enchantress may be better include than Mesa. I think I have an Argothian Enchantress in here. So yeah, there she is. A bruise are always worth the time. It's always a learning experience. Thank you, Drunk Logic. I agree. It's interesting. Like I haven't brewed for Abzan in, in quite some time. So it's fun just seeing... Oh gosh, if that wasn't Guy's Cradle, which is weird to say. I've been brewed for... Uh, absent in a very long time and it's funny because not much has been added to that color pair that really lends itself to finishing the game sadly right usually you'd rely on your commander for some form of value and as a, or and or as a finisher and a nick is like a very odd value engine 
this is not a good hand unless we top deck a land, and we didn't. Okay. Sarah's Sanctum, you say. Entomb, you say. Scourge Familiar. So there's some stuff going on here, but it's not quite good enough. I do like the discarded card business, but we're not going to get to that Sarah's Sanctum anytime soon. Did we miss Miri's Guile for card selection? We didn't. Uh, Miri's Guile is essentially like a... I, I don't want to put it this way necessarily, but it's like a lesser Sylvan Library. You're looking at the top three and rearranging them how you like. It's like a free um, Sensei's Divining Top, essentially, every turn uh, at upkeep. But it's not necessarily something we need here. It is something you can certainly include, though. So this is a decent hand. It is missing ramp. But it does have two lands and a Sithis and a uh, Sanctum Weaver, right? So we can get the ball rolling on that. I kind of just wish that it had some form of stacks. But we can entomb a utility later. My issue is that this Asmodeus is kind of dead in hand. We don't really want him in hand. And we don't necessarily have a way to discard him. Maybe the survival of the fittest would be a good choice here still to pitch some of our uh, cards that aren't really good in hand, right? Because it would be great to be able to entomb the survival of the fittest and then use survival of the fittest off of like this, right? To set up our play line. Right, you would you would dump the Asmodeus, then you would dump the Scourge Familiar, and then you would find a third creature, which would be Necrotic Ooze and cast Necrotic Ooze, right? So, and, and then again, Survival of the Fittest. Again, so I ignored Survival of the Fittest earlier because it did not play into the, the deck strategy, but because we are adding a Necrotic Ooze line of play, I think Survival of the Fittest makes total sense and would have been really good there. Uh, so let's just see how we add it. We have a 101 cards, you say. Oh, my latest set. That's that's not what we need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really want to get rid of any of the enchantresses, but... We're going to get rid of the oppression for now. You can put it back in. Femrith Enchantress. Whenever an enchantment is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Huh. And just so you guys know, that does work with the uh, tokens you're making with Anixia. I don't think we're going to use Femrith, though. So, do I like this? It doesn't really have the mana requisite to cast said Deafening Silence, and it's only one land, but there's some really cool stuff in here. Ooh, I've not seen that Diabolic Intent art. I'm just curious as to what the top deck was. We weren't going to keep that. Okay, Sterling Grove, sit this out of time in hand. We could still leverage it to get rid of some value, I guess, or protect our things. Oh, this is not great. I mean, I really would want a Vampiric Tutor into some sort of fast mana. Uh, of course, the hand that comes with the Chrome Mox would have little by way of uh, imprinting. Uh, we can't get rid of the Scourge Familiar because it's a combo card, and the only other thing we can look at is the Culling Ritual. And to be honest, I hate the idea of ditching the Culling Ritual because we're not that far off from actually casting it and ramping out, right? If we did Chrome Mox off the top with <laughs> Silence, no, that wouldn't do it. It would have to be the Scourge Familiar and then a land. And then turn two, we would have City of Traders with Chrome Mox and um, Scrub Land or whatever we pull off of the Polluted Delta or the other fetch. Uh, we could still keep this, though, and I'm just going to Chrome Mox the, the Calling Ritual. This is shite. It's, it's slow is the issue. Uh, and we could just put down the... That's, I don't want to think too hard. We'll put down the Scrub Land. And we'll go to a next turn. What I like about this, though, is that I could silence someone if I had to. That's the only thing this has going for it. Culling Ritual might have just been better to hold and then ditch the Scourge Familiar. But, like, we're not pulling in anything really great here when we cast a Nyctia. We're sort of just casting her and getting value. But right now, there's no value, and we have no way to set up value. So, let's continue. Urza Saga. Well, that's something we can put in our graveyard and get back later for value. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, we don't have much to do outside of playing that, honestly, or just holding a silence. Let's just say we had to use the silence off turn, sure to stop someone from winning. 
We have our Wither Bloom Apprentice and no tutor for the other half of the combo, but we do get to make a construct here, which we're probably going to do because we got nothing else to do with this hand. Boop, we're going to do that and we're going to find a, just based off our hand, we need a green source. So we're going to find our Bayou. Cool. It's been a very, very slow start. You know, I might even just put this down there. It's fine. It's, I know, no, I lied. <laughs> Maybe because I kind of want to make that construct. Right, so it's a it's it's not a big boy, but it's a boy. It's there. We don't have any interaction with the. Uh, oh shoot, we couldn't have used the. Uh, did I tap Chrome Mox for the silence? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Moving on. Next turn. Deafening silence. Wow. Okay, a stacks piece now of all times. Great. We're gonna use this. We're gonna get another. Bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's do a uh, black and white no i don't want another scrub land i'm sorry what's our other one we're missing the green and white we're missing the how's green and white that's the um oh my gosh any reason for not running a token doubler like anointed procession or parallel lives uh only because you need to you need to hard cast them or entomb them and re and copy paste them with anixia and i'm not necessarily seeing us shooting for those those effects like right now you can see we're on turn three or four like we're going very very slow savannah wow this has been a very slow game and we're on turn four so far and nikthia has nothing to do there's nothing in our graveyard there will be an urza saga which will be an enchantment creature land in a second as soon as we cast a nikthia but really the best thing we can do is just play this and attack and pass Oh, hey, I didn't mean to draw. Did I just draw that? What just happened? Did I play a polluted? I think I played polluted Delta. All right. Boop. All right. Well, just by virtue. The, okay. So we get, let's just do this first. We can search our library for an artifact card of zero one and put it onto the battlefield. That's going to be Esper Sentinel because Lordy, we need draw going. This is going very slow. Um, But we do want to... I really did want to dam at this point because by turn five, the board is probably atrocious and we haven't done anything meaningful. So I think that what we'll do is put the city of traders down. We will cast a Anixia. Boop, 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 boop. Technically you could use the Chrome Mox here, but it's as good as a bio at this point. We're going to put Urza Saga back into play as a three, three zombie saga it can't tap for generic but that's okay we probably weren't going to use it for that we can't um cast anything else with our mana i don't believe not that we had anything to do but that's uh that's this board for now sorry pad can't get esper sentinel with urza saga oh is that true search your library for an artifact card with mana value zero one then put it on the battlefield and shuffle Needs to say exactly one generic or zero. Oh. Uh, what do we have in our deck? Um, I think we just grab Soul Ring then. Oh, that's not as that's not as good at all. That's not as good at all. Yeah, just Soul Ring. Oh, that's tragic. Is that true with our boy? I feel like I've had people do this to me. So for example, you couldn't have a mana cost of one. Uh, uh, all right, that's rough. Uh, thanks for that though. Okay, so we brought back Urza Saga though. That's nice. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Next turn. Okay. We have Necrotic Ooze in hand. Okay, so she's got nothing to bring back. You can see why I don't want the token doublers, right? Can you, it says mana cost, not value. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. 
I mean, we resolved it here. While resolving chapter three ability, you can find only a card with a mana. It's funny because it normally in the list where I run Urza Saga, it, just, it grabs like Lion's Eye Diamond, right? Or it grabs it grabs a combo artifact that is either zero or one. Probably the only time I've needed to grab Esper Sentinel more desperately. But yeah, so we've got two setup cards and then a combo card in our hand, which is so awkward. And we've got nothing to do with this deck. So this was a really bad start. That's a bad start. This is better. There's no, nope, there is an Esper Sentinel. <laughs> I don't necessarily know if I want to pitch it though, because I'd rather use Survival of the Fittest to go through a deck. But we've got, ugh, can we top deck a, can we top deck a Dark Red? That's the question. We'll keep this. Okay. Uh, we're going to do that into that. We could technically hold the Esper Sentinel. We could technically do a few things here. We could pitch the Necropotence, which is insane, and then cast the Survival of the Fittest holding the Esper Sentinel so that we could set up the line of play with it. But we're lacking the mana sufficient to cast Necrotic Ooze by that turn. I think. I think by all accounts, Esper Sentinel into like a blind meta is probably just better. But let's do that nutty thing I was talking about. Let's just do that. We'll do this instead. I just want to get to the win. I just want to get to the glorious win, okay? Is that wrong? Put survival of the fittest down. Sure. Okay. It does require very strictly a green to do the effect. Okay. Did I just pull another land? <laughs> like I said, it would have been better to just play the Esper Sentinel. Um, but I need a creature to dump to do the thing. So I kind of just want to set that up. So let's do that. Oh, ho, ho, not the Sarah Sanctum yet. We'll need another green source. So let's grab our, um, not by you under, under, no, 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 no. Did I not add the shock land? The black green shock land? Hold up. Or am I just, it's Verdant Cats. No, it's not Verdant Cats. What is the name of the shock land for Golgari? Go. Is it just not, an overgrown tomb? Okay, we well, yeah, uh, need an overgrown tomb. Cool. So do that, ditch the Esper Sentinel, did. We're gonna grab the Scourge Familiar. Or let's get the useless one out of the way. We'll grab Asmodeus. And then we'll discard Asmodeus. And we'll grab Scourge Familiar. Right? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Will this list be in Moxfield? Uh, no, but if you want, you can copy and paste it from, from here. And I always recommend that. So it's on tapped out, but it's very easy to just copy the text file. Or just even the URL and add it to your own uh, Moxfield or whatever architect whatever you choose to use you can just add it there instead and then revise it as you choose again these are always just a blueprint and thank you bloodblade for overgrown tomb because i always forget we're gonna get to the win people i promise it's gonna happen trust me was what i did to get there um oh hey the right choice i can't say i really can't say so with this, we do not have enough mana to cast out the win here, right, with this. We need precisely three cards in hand to win with this line of play. So we need to ditch Scourge Familiar, and we need to cast Necrotic Ooze for four. So the math doesn't add up. Survival of the Fittest is going to be used off turn here, right? And we want to give ourselves the best odds. So really the best way to handle this situation is to just oh double black yeah we're gonna have to do it this way we would want to kill any value that's on the board but this is not going to do enough maybe we do the sarah sanctum instead now we need a double black that is black cool so maybe we do the sarah sanctum instead we do it this way one two three fine that's that's not killing shit we would have to do it with this 
Yeah. Like I said, I want to do the thing off turn. We're not impacting the board whatsoever right now is my my issue. But we can do, we could just set that up. We can just play that. Fine. Let's just play that. So Sarah Sanctum have something to use. We'll use the Overgrown Tomb uh, outside of turn. We will draw up to a sufficient amount of cards to make this work. So shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. If we ship this and it succeeds on turn four, cast Necroticus. Is Necroticus good? All right, now with these two cards. Wow, that was the slowest survival of the fittest. I don't normally recommend for Abzan, we might want to just have a Dork Suite. We might just want it. Because these starts have been very slow. And Anikthia is not really adding anything to this package, I gotta say. Sadly. But what we're gonna do is use Necrotic Ooze's ability with these two. And we're gonna discard three cards, make three black, and then draw seven cards. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. Uh, we're going to discard the lands. One, two, carpet flowers. Sure. Three. Actually, we might need the colored mana. If we do, uh, that's not true. We could just use black with animate dead. Yeah, we can use black with animate dead. Although, if we happen to fail here, it would be nice to be able to generate the... No, we're off Heliod. So we've got the green here for the, uh, with the Bloom Apprentice line of play. So basically, you just go down three. Every single time, I'll ditch the carpet, fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you just do this until you find your win, right? So if we want to be cheeky, we can just Culling Ritual as we go along. We, we could use Culling Ritual as we go along. We're only generating black, but you could use this for the green and then make the green. Um, we would get rid of a lot of stuff. Oh, to include our win, uh, our, one of our win cons for Animate Dead. But there's, there's options, I guess is what I'm saying. You could... Break the board if you needed to. You shouldn't need to. But basically, you'll pull into a win this way. Have you played the new Nissa? Have you played the new Nissa? Played against it at attorney? It was basically a Shia combo. Right. Um, Abby. So that was um, kind of the way I saw it going for it. And some people were actually mentioning a Shia for this deck. And I don't think that's bad. I think Nissa will probably be more efficient at getting there, though, just by virtue of the fact that she ramps. And she searches. And in mono green, that's pretty brutal. Um, I haven't played the Nissa, but I do want to brew it. And maybe it's something we brew next. Dork Suite is a good idea. Spirit Guide is in the list. No, um, not... You, you mean this, the actual Spirit Guides. I don't know why I was thinking when you said that, like, Spirit of the Labyrinth, like, as a stacks piece. But no, that's not what you meant. No, neither of the Spirit Guides are in the deck, and they can probably be. Because this list isn't trying to go quickly like that, I didn't include them. But yeah, we should probably include them. Um, I figured I have Overgrown Tomb, right? Oh, snap. I see Survival of the Fittest is incredibly strong with Necrotic Ooze combo. Yeah, it's just a good way to set up the line of play, but this is very sluggish. Like, you would really, 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 really want to fast mana all that out and have dorks to feed the Survival of the Fittest mana cost. But the creature count in this deck is low. Like, you'll look, look at our hand here. <laughs> look at our hand here. Like, we don't have any creatures off of drawing 14 cards. Right? I didn't discard any creatures. So the reason dorks are nice with survival decks is the fact that they're just bodies, essentially, to discard at a certain point. Because it does matter that they are creatures you're discarding. I can say that, and it works well with Anikthia, because you can reanimate it if you happen to get it removed. You just want to have it there as a combo enabler. It's a one-card combo. But it does require other things to get the ball rolling. I think this deck is fine. I'm going to do... Uh... Why don't we just talk? Why don't we just talk? So, Anikthia, thoughts? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Love it? Leave it? Let me know. I think that... Uh, feel free, again, to copy-paste this. This list should be up-to-date. It's Anikthia Egg and Cheese. Probably my favorite thing to get at the deli. I would say that they goofed up on this sandwich, though. Like, I asked for a hero. They put it on a roll. I wanted Chipotle Mayo. They put regular mayo. The reason I don't want token doublers is because I kind of foresaw this problem with the deck. Like, we're not even really focusing on her as a strategy. What I like 
that she does do is when she's down and you have any of the sort of recurrable self-sacrificing enchantments, then she's a really cool value engine. But at 5 CMC to reanimate an enchantment, like that enchantment better be really amazing. And sadly, like I said, the best target and the one I keep going to is Necropotence. And at that point, I feel like there are better ways to get to Necropotence in other lists. Like just rituals, all the fast mana ad nauseum uh, is better at 5 CMC than it is to run an Ichthya. And then obviously Xur just finds Necropotence for like the strategy that you just want to fill your hand and then do the thing. Yeah, I can't really think of many other art, uh, like enchantments rather that I would really want to hit here. And all that she really does is is play insurance. So if for some reason I use my 99 to find the combo and I run it and part of the combo gets neutered, well, if it's in my graveyard still, I'm able to use a Nyctheer to bring it back and give it a second go. Here it's just not... I don't know. I just don't think she does enough. So, I mean, I'll, this is all to answer the question, is Anicthia Hand of Erebos any good as a commander? And we did take a while to really discuss this list at the beginning of the stream, right? To review some combos, discuss some potential play lines. I think if the Abdel line of play actually worked with Anicthia, as we had brought up in the beginning, like if we were able to use Necromancy on Abdel and it was bouncing the actual card and not a copy, man, that would have been really cool. That would have been really good. I think that the better route to go if you want to focus on a Nyctia is maybe, this is going to be weird, ditch the Enchantress aspect of this list and then free up a lot of space for a lot of interaction, a lot of hard stacks, and then a lot of ramp. And then roll into a self-mill strategy. And I think that's going to boil down to the Basalt Mesmeric Orb line of play. And then pulling out choice enchantments from there. Like not going hard, but pulling out the ones you actually need. Or it's like going until you hit your Necropotence and then pulling the rest of your list to just do lines of play. But also, if you do the self-mill with her, not only can you roll until you hit like value pieces, you can roll until you hit your Animate Deadly and Relic Warder for a Meat Hook Massacre play. Or you can roll into the same line of play we've been using by drawing our deck with uh, Necrotic Ooze. At which point, the Necrotic Ooze would really just be leveraged for the black mana, right? If you decide to just hit black mana and then roll into one of your combos, provided you needed the mana. Because the two main wins are going to be the Witherbloom Apprentice Chain of Smog, at least for this deck. That or the, the other one I just mentioned. That or... The Meat Hook, Meat Hook Massacre, Lean and Relic Order line of play, which is probably the easier one to hit off of a self mill. I think that would leverage her ability more efficiently than what we're doing by entombing Unmarked Graving or Buried Alive things for her. Because even in a Buried Alive pile, I would rather hit Necrotic Ooze, Asmodeus, and Scourge Familiar. It's just, it's just better, right? But what's nice about that line of play, again, if, if she were out and we fail, we're discarding cards to make mana to do the thing, so it plays well into her. So I think Self Mill, Asmo Line, and Witherbloom Apprentices are probably the strategies you want to employ. I can't say that this particular build is working as effectively as I'd like. I think that you can include the Spirit Guides. You should. You should include all the, the fast mana by way of rituals as well. So like put in Cabal Ritual, if not here. We have Dark Ritual. And definitely add in more lines of interaction because there's a lot of time during our playthrough there, just goldfishing, that we were lacking interaction off turn and just had mana open, which is really not the place you want to be in, right? Normally speaking, it's best if you were able to use a low to the ground commander to provide early game value. And that's like why, that's why Timna is so good. That's why Serasios is so good. They're really just giving you a heck of a lot of value. Right. Whereas Anicthia, it's such a very narrow, such a narrow area she's like working in, she's operating in. It's not very effective for us because I kind of wish it said creatures or enchantments. I don't think she would be broken if she was able to just bring back creatures as well, except make them 3-3 three, three zombies. Yeah, she's okay. Um, How does this compare to... Oh, sorry. Let me go back to the top. Hey, new here. Hey, Biran. 
what made you choose Anixthia over the other commanders, such as Thali and Gitrog and Abzen? Uh, good stuff. Uh, specifically because it was the first Commander Masters card that was spoiled from the recent spoils that really had me intrigued. What happened was we had ran a community post to check in on everyone when those cards were spoiled to see what people wanted to brew. And if you were with me and Will last time, if you said you're new, we did Zuladoc. But I really wanted to check out Anixia because I am a fan of Abzan. I will state that Thali and Gitrog are probably better, but I did want to just brush up on these new Commander Master cards before they come out because it's a little bit more uncharted territory than the, the good stuff package of Thali and Gitrog because you can really sort of take that list anywhere. I like Commanders or Legendaries rather that push you a certain direction, although I will state Anikthia is a little confused as to what that direction should be. And we kind of had issues navigating that in the beginning here. Um, what it ultimately amounted to was just okay. I feel like this is just okay. You've gotten me interested in building like a super stack slugfest list here uh, with this. I think that is probably better. Also, how does this compare with Miracle? I've never played Miracle. I feel like some of the audience members have though, and maybe you can speak to that. Or if you have made a list, please let us know. I'd be curious, to, is your impressions of Miracle, does it operate in the same sort of space? Does it play the same sort of way? Is it better, worse? Uh, love to know your opinions. Uh, she will probably end up being great in a high power meta, but not CDH pod. Scrat, I'm with you there. I feel like she's not doing enough at 5 CMC. She has to do a lot more at 5 CMC for me to be interested. It's like a bad mid-range enchantment matters, but not matter that much, right? It's, yeah, it's so weird. She's so confused. Like, I would rather just cast the value. And it's weird because, like, if you think about all of the enchantments that are run in CDH, the ones that are hyper effective, the ones that we really like, they're all low cost. Like, the ones you see, Necropotence, Underworld Breach, Sylvan Library, Carpet of Flowers, Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth. Um, and think of all your favorite value enchantments. I'm telling you, like, is, is dress down an enchantment at two CMC? Right? It's it's blue, right? But you know what I'm saying? All of the enchantments you actively see play are going to be three and under. And Anikthia wants to bring them back from the grave. Why? Like, why aren't you just casting them? Just cast them. Like, it's like the whole idea, or at least the concept for me, should have been bring back real bomb enchantment, but there's nothing good enough to entomb for her to bring back. It's it's just, it's sad. Like, I thought when we did the Scryfall search and just like looked at the top end of enchantments, we were going to see some real gas, but man, there was just no, there wasn't. <laughs> At any rate, I agree. Absent is decent enough wedge without relying on enchantresses. I think that, at least for her, I would much rather, like I said before we started gold fishing, like I, I feel like I'd rather just play Sithis. I know for a fact I would rather just play Sithis than just have draw and pull into value and lay down stacks and just do dumb things. I would rather just do that. Yeah, there are a lot of fun, interesting things you can do with her outside of CDH, for sure. Humility is decent to entomb. Yeah, blood. We, it's in sideboard. So guys, with that, I think we answered the question. Is Anikthia Hand of Erebos any good as a commander? I'm going to say she's fine. If I was going to give her a rating on our tier list, I would probably say she's a C. I would say she's very casually minded. She's slower. She's not going to be doing anything better than any other list in these colors. Like Thali and Gitrog would have just probably been better by virtue of the fact that they draw. Yeah, and there's stacks in the command zone. So even if I'm not getting value out of Anikthia on the cast, because again, there weren't many situations where I could have cast Anikthia and have gotten value, at least Gitrog and Thalia, I know when I place them down, they're giving me value by way of uh, taking away options from my opponents, right? And then obviously giving me draw, ultimately. But uh, I'm glad we tried it. <laughs> you may play additional land, creatures, non basic land to your opponents. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Dolly and Good Rock's great. First strike, death touch. Uh best keyword soup right there. That's the best. Menace is fine. I'd rather just threaten auto death. Anixia. I would say that the Zuladoc list we built was better for CDH. <laughs> Add colorless. I don't know how that is. But gang, thanks so much for joining me on this one. I had a lot of fun brewing for it. 
I cannot wait to brew more for Commander Masters. Please let me know what you guys would like to see next. I'm very curious to brew Nissa. Thank you for bringing it up, Abby. I think you were you brought it up. I'm, I'm definitely curious to brew a Nissa, and I think that might be what we do next Wednesday. It's something that I'm... I like mono green a lot. I know green is in a tough spot so far as CDH is concerned, but I love the strategies in mono green, despite the fact that it usually takes three to four creatures to get the ball rolling on any one strategy, but they're so fun to pilot. And I can say that Nissa is probably one of the more interesting mono green legendaries we've seen in a very long time. And her strategy, just playing her as a strategy is good. And she gets to use, again, it's almost like the Joy Rel deck tech we did. You get to deploy strategies you wouldn't commonly see elsewise, right? Like, at least at a CDH table, or if you're trying to pilot this at a CDH table. Like, ripping and roaring all of the extra lands to do just crazy things on your next turn. And then, obviously, benefiting off the fact she's a Lotus Cobra. That seems really interesting to me, so I want to check it out. So what does Anikthia do? Morda, I just got here. Um, I'll... Definitely encourage you to check out the link in the description so you can see. And also when this video is done, it's a VOD, so you can rewind it and check out our playthrough so you can get a better idea. Um, but yes, thank you, Biran. That covers it all. Uh, you can literally play Thali and get Rog at standard, get Rog list with Splash of White. Yeah, pretty much. But guys, thank you so much for joining me on this one. I had a lot of fun. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave this video with a like so other gamers know that it's worth their time. Also, uh, feel free to share it so that other gamers can check it out. I really appreciate that. You guys have been really supportive of me coming back and doing CDH content or just TCG content in general here on Local Game Guy. And I, I really appreciate that. It's nice to be welcomed. And uh, I, I'm enjoying doing these again. If you want to hang out tomorrow, me and my friend Mikey are going to be playing One Piece. I understand it's a different game. It's still very fun to watch though. So it's definitely worth a look if you haven't tried that game out. But guys, my name is Patrick Marlette, your Local Game Guy, and I'll see you on the next one likely Nissa next week. Also, an aside, um, I'm trying to set up gameplay here. So it would be nice to be a weekly thing. And I think a good excuse for everyone just to get together and play on spell table. It would be that way. Live. So hopefully that's soon. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next one. Connect here.